It's time for Twig this week in Google. Jeff, Stacy, uh, Ant, we're all here. We got lots to talk about, uh, including some surprising news from Barcelona that raises the question of where uh, where are the next where are the conferences going? What's happening to conferences? We'll also talk about a new phone or two from Samsung and the end of an Android phone company. It's all coming up next on Twig. This Week in Google comes to you from the Twit LastPass Studios, securing every access point in your company. It doesn't have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 546, recorded Wednesday, February 12th, 2020, The Karsten Doctrine. It's time once again for This Week in Google, the show where we cover the latest from the Googleverse, the Facebookverse, the Twitterverse, the Mediaverse, anything you're not adverse to. It's Stacy Higginbotham. My goodness, from Stacy on IoT, the fine podcast, Stacy on IoT.com, the IoT podcast at Giga Stacy. Hello, Giga Stacy. Hello. You know, tree planting day was on Sunday. Did you plant a tree? Mm, no. No, we should. Is all... that Arbor Day? No. No, that's it's a it's a Jewish holiday for tree planting. Oh, really? Yeah, celebrate mm -hmm. all the trees they plant in Israel. You know. That's Jeff Jarvis. God knows he's the Leonard Town Professor for Innovation and Journalism at the Craig Normark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York and director of the Town Heights Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Craig Normark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. And BudgetMachine.com is his blog. He also writes a lot of books, including the newest, which is in progress, all That's, about yeah. Herr Gutenberg. Gutenberg. The Gutenberg Revolution. That's not your book. That's not your new book. No, no, though. no. I got, I got, I'm doing the business. Why are you of books. writing a book if there's a whole bunch of books I'm about it? I'm doing counterpunch about how to make fonts. <laughs> I'm doing He's a reader, an inveterate reader. More Gutenberg. Wow. I got books all over me right now. <laughs> Turn the page and look who's Kevin here. Turns the page on me. Et Pruitt. Pruitt <laughs> is the star of hands on photography at twit.tv slash hop. And is not a former TV Guide critic. Nope. Which was one of the big selling points, actually. At one point. For hiring you in. <laughs> uh, the Mobile World Congress. Top story. Mobile World Congress. Big show every mm. year. Barcelona, Spain. It's the place all the phone companies go to show off their new phones, except no one was going to go. And so the GSMA, the GSM Association, which puts this show on every year, has announced we're going to cancel the show. Oh my gosh, it. it's cancel culture. No, I'm kidding. Cancel culture. <laughs> it's Mobile World Congress. Well, I'm excited because, you know, I was looking forward to not like having my my computer and my wallet stolen in Barcelona. Mm. Uh, have you ever had your computer wallet stolen in Barcelona? I have not, but my colleagues have oh, multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just really? a thing that happens. Um I've, I've just been lucky. Um but were you gonna go? No, no, I was not. I I don't like Mobile World Congress, and it's not as I oh, it's not as IoT ish. Um, I think that I never had a problem with it. Um, even though it's Mobile World and it's supposedly all about phones, it just seemed like another extension of CES to me. It was actually it got bigger than CES. Remember about oh. probably seven. <clears throat> I shouldn't say bigger, but seven years ago or so, maybe even eight years now. All of a sudden, it moved from being a phone show to being like a I have something connected to the internet. Mm. Yeah. And Facebook showed up. Every, I mean, everyone was Lots there. Lots of stuff there. Well, not this time. <clears throat> uh, so. Can you imagine the cost? They're just the losses. Well, the losses to hotels and restaurants oh, in Barcelona. Geez. And of course, uh, people have already started canceling hotel rooms. Uh, they'll probably lose some of their. Um, you know, deposits, so there'll be mm -hmm. some... Airline cancellations, yeah. Jesus. And all of this because of uh, the novel coronavirus, now known as COVID-19. Or? 
as as Carson says, cove fever. Cove fever. fever. <laughs> <laughs> I got a fever. Um, I, it's just kind of a shock. I also think it's kind of a bellwether for the future of conferences. We don't really need conferences. See, this was interesting. I was looking at what was happening when we prevent people from traveling and we interfere with the free range of goods. Things the the economy slows down by quite a bit. Yeah. So I'm yeah. looking at this. World and, trade is good for a lot of things. It's good for the economy. Mm -hmm. It's good for peace. And, and understanding. And understanding. And, and, and seeing people in other cultures. I mean, that's that's the the one problem I I, I get the ecological mm -hmm. argument against flying, but now more than ever we have to have connections with people in other lands. Mm -hmm. Well, the internet has made that pretty much uh, useless. So uh, futile. So uh, I suspect that we're going to see a lot of conferences kind of go by the wayside. Everybody agrees that the only reason to go to a conference these days is to see people, to talk to colleagues. And who wants to do that? <laughs> yeah, but I guess I, there's still that, that small group of people that go there for the sales opportunities too, the networking side of it. They're not know? small. That's a huge, like CES, that's who's there. Mm -hmm. That's what that shows about. But I think that's I why CES continues when Comdex... And other trade shows have gone, uh, you know, uh, CBIT, which is even bigger than Comdex. Yeah, I remember CBIT. Gone because, it, you, uh, you know, but CES persists. I'm not sure. You know, Comdex was I, I a think dealer's Comdex, expo. But it was yeah, too narrow, Comdex maybe. Yeah, was tied to PCs. Yeah, it was too narrow right. a, a field, as was, as was uh, CBIT. So maybe, <laughs> but so that's what's, I mean, honestly, without CES... I think a lot of stuff wouldn't get made because that's where you go with your prototype, your early product, mm -hmm. you talk to dealers, you get a sense of whether they'd be interested in selling it. Dealers make orders of stuff. It's uh, important for uh, commerce. So yeah, we people are just are just irritants to the blood flow yeah, the of, journalists. of commerce. Well, but yeah, but the journalists have to come don't, too. Don't Can I see that? that? <laughs> yeah, the journalists are important too, I think. I don't know. Would you? I I feel like we don't need to go to trade shows. Would you? Do you still want to go to CES next year, Dan? I I love it. It's yeah, a lot really, of work. You but really I absolutely had fun. love it. Yeah, it's horribly efficient. I mean, going to like Is Hanover it? Messe or yes, because you get to see in one place, you can assimilate what people. One. There's a, there's a value because it costs money to go to these things. So mm. you can't just call someone up and be like, I just launched a product. It's really random but cool. <laughs> so these people have paid money to get here. You can see it all at once. So you can spot trends. You can compare and contrast. I think it's hugely valuable and hugely efficient. Yeah. Just a devil's advocate. Can't you get all that out of the press releases at home? Yeah. No, press, not, have you read a press really. release lately? But also, again, the, <laughs> the the whole networking side of it, being able to look at those PR people eye to eye and and get a feel for, okay, mm. I want to deal with this person going forward because, you know, we're content creators. Right. And yep. it's nice to have a good relationship so we can continue to uh, create great content. And there are so tons what, of... What like, was going to be... Uh, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, I have questions. I mean, a PR release is nothing compared to like what you actually need to know. Right. You know, in terms of how something works. So you, le or, you learned things, both of you at CES. Well, of course. Why else would you go? <laughs> so what and were you, we going you to learn? You learn the things that they don't MWC. want you to know. Because you can actually ask them. If, in their press release, they're just going to tell you what they want you to know True. about the product. True. If you actually yeah. go and touch it, you can say, so you can ask them, well, what about this? this is COVID-19, is this just hysteria? And we're going to, like we did with the Spanish flu in 1918, in a couple of months, forget about it, and everything will be back to normal. Or will there be a long-lasting... People flu did not forget 20, about 20, the Spanish 2018 flu. 2018 was not just... The 2018 like, Spanish yeah. flu was terrible. It killed It killed more people than, than World <laughs> War I. Like, no, no, 1918. Are we talking about the 1918 1918, Spanish 1918 flu? yeah. <laughs> the 2018 really was just a blip. No, the 1918 Spanish flu, I know, but we forgot about it, right? Mm -hmm. No, we didn't. Well... I only mean in the sense that it it didn't stop world travel. No conferences were. I know. I know. No, that, if, I know the nineteen. If the conferences had been canceled, then then it, maybe people as many. Well, what's interesting about that is Wasn't we that didn't the have the kind of fascism of, in Spain. Yeah, we didn't have the kind of travel that uh, we have today in right. nineteen eighteen. In fact, the reason it spread was it was right after World War One ended, and a lot of soldiers took it home with them. Uh, so it was an unusual situation. I don't know. I wonder if we're, if if this will just be you know they're a little hysteria. Everybody 
forgets about it and next year Mobile World Congress continues? Or should we start worrying about, especially about the conferences held in winter? You know, we dodged a bullet at CES. Mm -hmm. It could have easily. Right. It could have yeah. been a nightmare. There were a lot of Chinese companies, Chinese uh, staff there. The 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 COVID-19 started in October or November, so it could easily, uh, like, it's a few weeks difference. Mm -hmm. We would all come home two weeks later. Are there any of the tech companies near Wuhan? Oh yeah, in fact, there's. Area? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. In fact, uh, mm -hmm. there's uh, there. This will also impact American tech companies like Apple, who build yeah. stuff in China. Right. Uh, yeah, your Kickstarters will all be delayed. Uh, we're starting to see. Uh, <laughs> That's a convenient excuse. <laughs> oh, right. More delayed than they, they otherwise would have been. Those dice. Uh, we're not going to send them to you this year either. But car production for certain lines has stopped. Um, there, I think G GM is restarting their line uh, this weekend, last oh. weekend. What day is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think here's an interesting story that uh, applicable to technology. China has launched a coronavirus close contact detector app. Uh, they're asking people to download it, Chinese citizens to download it. And it will tell you uh, <laughs> if you've been near somebody who's had oh, the geez. virus. You might wonder, how would they know? Well, they China. know. <laughs> it's, ch it's China. It's China. China. So uh, they, ha they have all kinds of, they have different levels. For instance, if you were on an air-conditioned train, everybody in the car had close contact. Mm. If you were on an airplane, everybody within a few rows of you had close contact, mm -hmm. three rows. Um, it's a really interesting, and they know who was where, when, and where you were, too, for that matter. All you have to do is scan a barcode. And you can scan a quick response code on your smartphone. And they'll come and get you in the middle of the night well, and put you in a uh, camp. Yeah. And yet, I bet you... If it, if, I mean, honestly, if we had something like that here, would pandemics people... are a classic case of individual rights versus group health? I mean, that's this is right. Yeah, it's part of it's part of like everybody's horror stories and like one man standing up for the rights of his community kind of setups because it is a classic tension. Typhoid Mary, right? Was that a, Mary Mellon? Yeah, that was in New York, right? Yep. Yep. Ironically, there were so many doctors in the 1800s that were like typhoid Marys with uh, purple fever, um, like who didn't who would give birth to babies or deliver babies and then wouldn't wash their hands and then would go to the next mom. And so yeah. they'd all they were like typhoid Marys times a million. Did you watch so the scary. Nick? Did you ever watch the Nick? No. Oh, my God. It's uh, it's uh, takes place in a New York City uh, in the 18 somethings. It's basically about the uh, arrival of the invention of surgery. The nip is <laughs> and what it's they called? weren't really good at it at first. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of nip tuck, but that no, is no K N I C K. That was the nickname for the Knickerbocker Hospital. Clive Owen uh, was the star of it, um, and it was it was horrific. <laughs> Steven Soderbergh directed it. It was horrific. It was nineteen hundred. Oh, wow. Honestly, without this, we wouldn't have modern surgical techniques. It's just in the early days, as you might imagine, when they were first... With you know, everything. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Right. With everything. <laughs> There's a beginning. It was pretty bad. There's a, There are scenes in it. And yeah, I don't think they had modern hygiene yet. There were, uh, there were scenes in it where they had uh, some sort of blood transfusion machine that an intern would have to crank by hand. To keep it to keep Oof. it running, Oof. it was it was all pretty bad. Man. Anyway, if you want to feel uh, good about what we've got today compared to then, that's a. That's Can I a ask show. a geeky question? Sure. What were we expecting at the World Congress? Aren't phones just all the same now? Well, okay, so uh, do we really so, care? Is this, does this kill that whole? Idea I think of this might kill Mobile World, Con Mobile World Congress because it isn't as necessary. In fact. To that point, Samsung yesterday had an event announcing their new phone. They didn't feel like they had to wait. They, in fact, they specifically didn't want to wait till Mobile yeah. World Congress. It's only smaller companies that need MWC to announce phones, right? Well, and Samsung hasn't been doing anything over there for a while anyway, so it doesn't right. really matter to them. Microsoft wasn't going to go. LG wasn't going to go. MediaTek, the chip company, wasn't going to go. I mean, the the dropout, well, the list of dropouts they, was Sony. But they, yeah, they didn't go because of the coronavirus. Because of it wasn't COVID. Like, but yeah. 
I think also it didn't hurt that they didn't need to. Didn't need to. Right. They still have their clout without right. MWC. Right. So has anybody announced like a web spectacular? No, but I imagine that's the next thing. Well, we couldn't go. Well, there was an announcement today. I don't think it's related. Andy Rubin announced that he was putting Essential down. It's over. Wow. This, what was Essential again? So Andy Rubin invented Android. <laughs> he created the company Android, was purchased by, micro, uh, by uh, Google. He became a Google executive where he continued development of Android. We talked a lot about it a mm -hmm. few years ago when he left to pursue his dream of Where, Let's discuss his leaving. Robots. Yeah. And then left completely. He left, I think, involuntarily because of, uh, uh, you know, uh, allegations. Sexual, considerable allegations. Yes, considerable allegations about sexual harassment, which actually seem endemic at Google, but that's another story. He received a $90 million payout, which really irritated a lot of Google employees, yep. took some of that money, raised more money, in fact, became created a billion-dollar company called Essential. The idea was to make a perfect Android phone. In fact, I bought that first Essential phone. It was a beautiful phone. I really liked it. And it had some interesting novel ideas that were going what to be clamp on. horrible experience, though, right? Well, the, the thing that kept it from being a hit, no, I liked it. The thing that kept it from being a hit is that their camera app crashed uh, for the first few months after yep. it was released. So you couldn't take any pictures with it. They fixed that eventually. I gave mine to uh, Father Robert, but I actually really liked it. It was a little smaller. Mm -hmm. There were some uh, nice things about the Essential phone. And he was and, also developing that extra little slim phone, too. Yeah, he had, remember, he announced, and there was going to be the Essential 2. He also, Stacy was going to do a lot of home automation stuff, right? I remember the home automation, but that never happened. So Never happened. Wouldn't you say that his departure and payout was the start of the entire movement of unhappiness inside Google? Absolutely. Well, um, I think oh, that's inside fair. Google? There were a number okay. of other uh, events. In fact, we really have to give credit uh, to the woman who wrote the Uber memo. Uh, yeah, no, I'm saying inside yes. Google. Inside Google. But I think that, so. That was one of many. That yes, was the true. wave that swept through Google. And then and then you're right. I think that, that the chief issue in the Me Too movement at Google was Andy Rubin's $90 million, $90 million payout. Bucks. And now you have the head of HR or whatever they call she it. She has left. At Google departing. Yeah. Now, she, wait a minute, I thought she just took a different role at Google, just stepped down from that uh, HR leadership role. Is that role. the case? I don't know. I thought she just stepped uh, down to a different Google's role. Google's head of HR leaves in tumultuous times. It says, uh, Vox says, uh, actually Recode says she's quit. Oh. Um, she, of course, and uh, you know, quit or was encouraged to quit. I'm not sure, but she became kind of the locus of a lot of uh, unhappiness. She'd been at th Google for 13 years, head of HR. She said she's stepping down to be closer to her family in New York. Um, uh, you know, I, you know, she's the fourth long tenured Google executive to step down in recent months, including Larry and Sergey, It has to be un unpleasant to be at the head uh, of Google with all of this turmoil, tumult going on. Yeah, see, when I first saw the report, I thought it was uh, just stepping down from that particular role into something else. So my assumption was maybe she's just sick and tired of all of this stuff that's well, going that's on safe. and she's having to take the weight of it. Yeah, and who's to say that... I think you're safe there, yeah. Pachai is doing anything about it, but... Now I see that this is all right. She's totally gone. From Sundar Google. said, over the past story. 13 years, Eileen has made major contributions to the company in numerous areas, from meter partnerships to leading our sales and operations in the UK and Ireland to leading our people operations team through a period of significant growth. She hired, oversaw the hiring of 70,000 new employees. She says she wants to spend. Oh, that's interesting. Look forward to her next chapter at Google. So that does kind of imply. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. My husband and I have decided, she said, after six years on the road, first in London, now in San Francisco, to return home to New York to be closer to our family. I'll be working with Sundar and Ruth to find a great leader for the people operations team. So maybe she isn't. It's unclear. This is also, look look for a lot more of this sort of thing to happen in the next few months. This is the end of Larry and Sergey's people, the people that Larry and oh, Sergey are oh, okay. yeah. yes, right, being yeah. in yeah. charge. Yeah, that's and interesting. The people that... that yeah, Sunder might be bringing his people. In. Yeah. What happened Stepping to Karsten up. Cam? Yeah. yeah, I was just about to say, where's my yeah. Karsten we don't, Cam? We don't have enough uh, inputs for Karsten. <laughs> B.S. We, we, we could do the Karsten Cam. B.S. We need to, but... <laughs> 
We can do Carson, the Carson, if you're going to make good points, you can't. Can't. Can your face. John, can I want to do cam? like Letterman did. We should just strap a camera to Carson's head like the monkey cam. And Carson could run around the studio. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> then we wouldn't see you, Carson. We'd just see everybody else. So, yeah, unclear. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I would draw a huge amount of... Uh, uh, conclusions from this because mm -hmm. it could be all of the above, right? Right. And I if you think, think about, about it, somebody who's been at Google for 13 years probably has some significant stock options. She oh, probably doesn't yeah. have to work. <laughs> I thought know. you were going to say some significant trauma. And, I'm like, and yeah, trauma. They probably, need, they probably need a break. Has Google mishandled HR over the last 13 years? Rhetorical I would question. Hate to be, yeah. I, I would hate to be in charge of HR at a tech company. One, it's utterly devalued. Um, two, you're you're basically dealing with all of these people who people skills are not their their fort, right. and it's not something they're again not valued. So I think it would be like just an exercise in futility and bashing your head against the wall. I mean, think about just, the changes over time, right? When Google started, you had to go to a top school, you had to have. Mondo grades. Then they did all this data stuff, and they realized, oh nope, you actually don't need that. You just need to be smart. And you know, they did all those stupid tests, and they stopped doing that. And then they had all these things about how your life is different and this and that. And they they made themselves into the perfect place to work, which for a long time, people generally, I guess, I've talked to seemed fairly happy. Right. But it was always far more regimented than we know. One friend of mine who left there said it it is exactly like the Marines. Oh wow. That it is it is that regimented. Uh, I think people have frustration, obviously, with any big company. The bigger it gets, the less voice you have, the harder it is to get things done. And so that that problem of getting too big to be innovative, uh, which Eric Schmidt always said was their biggest problem, comes down hard on an HR department, I think, because what can you do about it? I've had some previous leaders um, that were at larger companies like at HP and, and, and the likes of that size. And they all pretty much said the same thing far as with it being so structured and rigid on the IT side of things. Um, but it makes sense because you, you, you have these processes and procedures in place to not only protect you, but also protect yeah. the company too. Think about the counter well, yeah. example. Uh, let's say uh, somebody like Equifax. Whoops. Who nobody got around to updating their Apache server software for six months, and then they got bit by, as it turns out, we've now, well, gosh, we live in a tough age for news. Because according to law enforcement in the federal government, it was the Chinese that hacked Equifax. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh, the boy. PLA. The PLA. They indicted uh, three PLA. That's the People's Liberation Army. Uh, 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 were they officers? Probably. Hackers would mm -hmm. probably be the other term to use uh, for hacking into Equifax. Uh, and according to our intelligence uh, uh, authorities, that Equifax joins Anthem, big uh, big medical uh, provider, and they even think the Marriott hack was Chinese. And one of the, one of the pieces of wow. evidence for that is none of that data has ever emerged on the dark net. Mm-hmm. And uh, if it were, what is there use for it? Yeah, wow. Well, well, that's a good. That's a no. That's a great question. So, so no, instead of selling it on the dark web, which a hacker would do, what is right. the Chinese military doing? Hacking these places where you would get lots of information about people's movements, mm -hmm. purchases. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, what's your What's your what? speculation, Stacy? They're trying to find both relationships that they can use offensively. Um, to target like government people or industrial people they want. Um, so for really good spear phishing attacks. Um, and then they're also trying to understand where these people are in time and space. It's, it's basically digital spying. It's really what Google and Facebook and Amazon are doing. It is exactly what they do. Yes, <laughs> but except they're using it for... It's big data because it, what it used to be, you'd probably have to do this in a kind of more retail way, right? Well, let's mm -hmm. find out what Leo's been up to and we can blackmail him. Now you just get every database you can. The bigger the dossier, the better. And yep. you can draw lines, make connections. More he's points. gay. I could tell he's gay or he's, uh, you know, he's uh, he must be working at the NSA. He goes to McLean a lot and we should follow him. You can figure all this stuff out mm -hmm. using AI based on big data sets. And I, I, I think there's that, not a business. There's no business. Well, what? No, I take it back. There's also a business value to it because, and I don't think you, can, you should never separate Chinese, the Chinese 
geopolitical aims from their economic aims. They're one yeah, and the but, same. Yeah, but at an individual level, if they know that I stayed in a given Marriott, how do they use that? Well, it's the single piece is not that useful. But yes, if they can get the a pattern. Aggregate. aggregate. And, and not merely get a pattern, but notice that every time Jeff Jarvis is in Washington, D.C., so is a person, right. another person of interest. And they both have dinner at the same restaurant. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's an aggregate. And it's the same exact thing Google does and Facebook does. Yeah. They do it on the behalf of advertisers. But you can imagine what uh, the Chinese could do with this. So uh, It just seems like it's... Thank you. A, lot, a few needles in a very <laughs> large haystack. Oh, but, okay, so Jeff, this is why you're not, tech, this is why you call this techno panic, but it's actually <laughs> relatively simple to bring compute power to bear here. That's, no, that's no, the beauty I, I, of I having agree. access to. I'm just trying to think of the, uh, the payoff to them. Well, let's say. The investment. I'm oh, thinking of the so ROI. They don't, the they're not I'm looking, saying. so they're not looking, they, they have their needle in mind, so they might be keeping mm -hmm. their eye on someone mm -hmm. that they think is a okay that's spy. about it. they don't start I'd like with to the know. database they start with the goal yeah and this is a way to get well, that maybe goal. Okay. but i would I'll like wouldn't you like to know the five highest ranking government officials who are secretly closeted gay or i mean there's blackmail opportunities blackmail. there's all <laughs> sorts of things i yep. guess being that's gay right. is no longer thank god uh, blackmailable. Maybe it is. I think if China positive. is. Maybe it is. Yeah, it depends on the culture yeah. you're dealing yeah. with. Maybe, maybe the federal officials would tell in the China, truth. In and Africa, well, they in get the Middle East, for it. it's very. That's right. That's right. Very worse. And in certain precincts of Washington, D.C., it might also so, have some So value. let's say they want to uh, uh, go after a high Saudi official. There you go. Perfect example. Um, so Perfect they, example. they would say, mm -hmm. okay, he was in this hotel yeah. next to right. this guy. Imagine. Uh, and, and he went huge to dinner value. with this guy. Yeah, huge value. And he went and yeah. he did this other thing with this guy. Maybe he and this guy are gay together. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you just say maybe he and this guy are gay together? Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. That was not the best way to say that, was it? <laughs> <laughs> and by gay, you mean sorry, happy. Like, you mean this happy. Like, this we week in junior high. high. You mean jolly. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gay together. Maybe, maybe this, they're, they're this Saudi official maybe they're in a relationship. Is a, a, a homosexual relationship with this other man, and we not and that we there's can, anything wrong with that. We can well it, in that. Saudi Arabia there is. There would be in Saudi Arabia. So we can we can totally blackmail right. this Saudi Arabia official. This Saudi I mean, Arabian I think official. if I'm uh, Chinese government, I think I want every bit of data there is. Why should only Google and Facebook have that? Shouldn't we have that too? Every bit of data there is. We could do thousands of things. You know. Anyway, that's and and again the problem. And this is where it's in a post-truth era, it really gets hard to do, to make any conclusions at all. Because this is just as we've received information uh, this week from the U.S. intelligence that there is definitely, we have definite proof that Huawei is spying uh, using their telecom equipment to spy on us. But are they providing that proof? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, okay. I, I think I believe them, but... Uh, that's it's that's the damage, by well, the way, it's, that it's, not it's trusting. Now, after and I'm going to get political for a second, I'll, I'll make it light. But after you see what happened yesterday with the Justice Department, how do you trust you can't. any investigation or pull you back can't. from all this talk about antitrust and the big platforms now? I'm you sorry, can't. but it's it's immediately well, suspect. T-Mobile Sprint, T-Mobile Sprint being fought right. by all the state attorneys general, 20 different states. Uh, the, f the feds have already approved it. Mm -hmm. FTC said okay. The FCC said okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the states are pursuing it. A judge just ruled this week, you know, prices probably won't go up. We don't really need competition between Sprint and T-Mobile. You didn't prove your case, so I'm throwing it out. Yeah. And now there is one last hurdle, uh, the well, California PUC. Oh. Well, I don't think it's a oh. very big speed bump, but there's one last hurdle to the T-Mobile Sprint merger. Now, I'm not sure I completely disagree with the judge. I don't think, I think Sprint isn't the strongest you know, yep. company these days. I don't know how much co competition they provide as the fourth carrier. I don't do think, we judge? I don't think Charlie Ergen and Dish are going to become a fourth carrier. That's the premise right that uh, well, well we're going to make a new one so it's okay boss i think t-mobile and sprint probably should merge purely from a technical point of view the one company be but they've been trying to do this it's been a little while ironically t-mobile <laughs> is owned by a japanese company softbank 
And uh, I mean, sorry, T-Mobile's owned by Deutsche Telekom, the German company, and Sprint's owned by a, Chinese, a Japanese company called uh, SoftBank. So it's kind of the new Axis powers here. If we could just get an Italian, maybe we get Olivetti involved. Olivetti, yeah. Betty. I don't know where I'm going with that one. There's nowhere to <laughs> go. You're going with, that. with World no War II, Axis of Evil. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going back writers. to the World War, the World War to the Tooth. So uh, when Olivetti, I listened to this book, which isn't that great, but Olivetti Lettera. So an author's Olivetti Lettera sold for like $250,000 oh at God. auction because of the author. Oh, my God. It was a beautiful wow. machine. Yeah. I love my old Olivetti. We talked about this last week. So back to, um, anyway, I've, we tied about 18 different stories into one conversation. We did. <laughs> that was very that nice. was what we do nice. here. It was very nicely sewn up. Such a pro. Oh, well, one, more, one more coronavirus. Um, <laughs> Have you seen anything reliable on, you know, is the supply chain for Apple phones going to die? I haven't seen any stock impact on American tech companies. Everybody just mentions that, oh, it's going to be tough for supply chain. Yeah, it's all they all say supply chains. No, Here's they're, it now. Yeah, they're talking about it on their earnings calls. So uh, yeah, yeah, did they, Apple it will, announce it? It on will their have an impact. Call? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They did talk about Man. this. Foxconn factory is closed down for an extra week. Oh, uh, Here's a Verge article. All the ways China's coronavirus outbreak is affecting tech. This is from a few days ago. The outbreak shows that what impacts China impacts everything. Apple, Samsung, Microsoft, Tesla, and Google. Uh, Google closed, for instance, its offices in Hong Kong and Taiwan, as well as some Chinese offices. All have closed offices. Uh, factories have been closed. Uh, Apple's head of people, Deidre O'Brien, said that uh, offices and contact centers are expected to open next week. Retail store or reopenings are still being determined. The problem is uh, this is a kind of a moving target. And I think that until there, there's an all clear from the World Health Organization, you're probably not going to see. Is or the really, Chinese government, you're not going to see uh, anything reopening. Is it really news that Google closed their offices during this time in in Hong Kong or wherever it is? It's, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's worth noting. Yes, yeah, it's Foxconn a lot of and companies. Pegatron both have closed factories, <clears throat> potentially delaying iPhone and AirPod production. See, that sounds more like news to me. That sounds like what most yeah. Google the offices are more like physical yeah. stuff. Right. Yeah. Google, they can move, they can move the functions, right, Ant? Right. Good point. But you can't move the physical, right? <clears throat> tangible, uh, tangible devices is, is, yeah, is a different agree. story. Because of the way Foxconn and many of the Chinese factories work, where the workers live on premises right. in very tight quarters and dormitories all together, uh, the government of China is blocking uh, Foxconn from reopening its Shenzhen plant. Foxconn is independently keeping its Zhangzhou plant closed, pending government review. Zhangzhou is iPhone City where the bulk of the world's iPhones are assembled. According to Bloomberg, John Joe might resume limited production on February 10th. Where this might hit badly is not <clears throat> the current crop of iPhones, but Apple was expected to announce new iPads and a new small iPhone SE successor in March. Uh, those would be devices that these factories would be working really hard on. Some Foxconn Trump factories... The, sorry. Some Foxconn factories... Stop making iPhones and start making face masks. Mm. So. Jesus. <laughs> wow. uh, Leo, given the, um, uh, the, the, the trade war fears of the last, what, year and a half with China, did a lot of these companies set up alternative uh, 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 yeah. supply chains yeah, anyway? That had, that, yeah, I mean, that had been happening. And <clears throat> it, partly that's also because of uh, trade restrictions in India and Brazil, for instance, Foxconn has to make iPhones in those two countries to sell them in those, for Apple to sell them in those two countries. So the factories are there. But I mm. think it takes a while to build a factory. Look how fast the factory in uh, Wisconsin, the Foxconn factory in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they've broken ground on that one yet. No. Uh, maybe they never will. So I, I still think we're pretty dependent on Chinese manufacture. It's oh yeah, and it's it's so oh, yeah. flexible. That's that's actually exactly. the story about from iPhones to face masks. It'll as as long as it can, it should be. Uh, we we're screwed if it if the whole country breaks down because we're yeah, screwed even can, if uh, you can move it. But uh, if you move assembly to Thailand, you still have to get parts from China. Mm -hmm. You'd have to you have to move the whole mm -hmm. supply chain mm -hmm. as well. This is not, that is a non-trivial thing. I mean, China is really the the fact the world's factory floor. 
And uh, it's hard. But they had to have, if, if they were fearing a total, I mean, there, there were threats of major um, tariffs on phones yeah, you'd think. out of China. Yeah. They had to have done alternative plans. A lot of stuff is starting starting to move to Malaysia. It's starting to move Ooh, to Taiwan. India. Um, Apple's <laughs> talking Apple's talking talked to about India Malaysia every yeah. day. Yeah. Well, in um, India, you have to because things they have are starting tariffs. to move to Vietnam, but this is something that's going to take years. This well, they, ta they talked about that. that get up that, and move. That uh, Vietnam just doesn't have the capabilities that China does. And so there's a lot of training. It took years for Apple to turn China into the iPhone manufacturing mecca that it yeah. is. You know, I mean, and in fact, we've all benefited from it. A lot of the technologies that Apple. You know, developed in China starting in 2007 with the, the iPhone, mm -hmm. have that's where the drone industry came from. That's where so many other things have come from, the ability to make those quickly, easily, effectively, cheaply. So I, yeah, I think this is. Um, I mean, think about auto manufacturing. How long it took absolutely. that to move from America to China? Right. Um, that that was decades. Tesla is postponing yeah, Model Three though. deliveries, saying uh, one that long delay one to to one and a half week delay. Uh, it plans to resume production uh, in its Shanghai factory or supposedly was going to on Monday. I don't know if they did. I think part of the problem is that <clears throat> it's a little bit, the coronavirus is a little unknown. And uh, is it getting worse? Is it getting better? And so it can all, spread everything, yeah, all these dates are, are kind of moving targets. So yes, the answer is yes. Now, you know who's not impacted so much by this? Uh, Samsung, which makes its phones in South Korea. Uh, they they yesterday had a big event announcing new phones. Very excited. They talked a lot about it on Alan about Android last night, so I won't uh, duplicate that. But I think despite, you know, of course, all of the nice features, and I bet you as a photographer are excited about the S20 Ultra mm -hmm. and you know, the most megapixels, the 100x zoom and all of that stuff. Yeah, and, and I'm not sold on the 100 megapixels, Six, but the, the zoom is, is a nice feature. 64 megapixels or 108 megapixels. The way they do that, though, is with pixel, pixel binning. binning. Yeah, so these are really actually 12 and 16 mm -hmm. megapixel cameras, and they take multiple images to give it effective 108 megapixels or 64 megapixels. They're very expensive phones, too. That's another thing that's kind of interesting. They start at 1000 bucks, go up to 1500 Samsung also announced a flip phone, which I, I can't <laughs> wait to get. I'm going to... Oh, that was my question. You're, I would you're go that route right before going I'm to up, around. I am getting up at midnight on Friday <laughs> to order this, and then I'm going to run over to Best Buy the minute they open to get the Z Flip. $1,380. Oh, uh, those people who were at the Samsung event yesterday and played with it were somewhat impressed. Yeah. It seems like that's yeah, getting a lot that's better. That's Google Glass. The... Right. No, it's not. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> First of all, I love it that it can be like a little Smurf laptop. It's like this big and it can sit up because the hinge is stiff. Right. So it could sit like Holds that. Holds itself up. Mm -hmm. um, it's flexible glass, not, not that soft OLED plastic that the other ones are using all right so so if money were no object and would you get one the flip phone let's put it this way yeah. if leo would buy you one would you get one i would rather go with the s20 yeah you should get the s20 i'd rather go that Stacey, route because of the and camera. by the way jason howell will be getting the s20 ultra uh as host of all about android mm -hmm. but we'll get you one if too you don't want to get up uh, early on <laughs> on Friday, Leo, You'll I'll go stand, get it. I, I will know. totally stand in line I for know, you. I know. Best Carson mind. knows he'll get the old he'll get the old phone. The, the so, flip phone Stacey? sounds fun, I'm, but no. I'm thinking I loved I loved my it's, what was it the razor the razor. It's, it's made for people like you, Stacy. Fashion forward people. It's oh, so made clearly for not people for me. With pockets like Stacy, <laughs> or purses. People people with yeah. I email, love the email idea. People don't have pockets for the S20. They've got pockets for the flip. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and it's, so it's the size of a pocket handkerchief. Um, so there's the, the original Galaxy Fold and other folding phones are tablets that are folded up. Right. So they're phone size once they're folded up or a little bigger. This is the size of a pocket handkerchief right. that unfolds to a normal 6.7 inch phone. Um, yeah. I like that. I might, I, I'm very cautious about longevity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, you should it, not buy it until I buy it. <laughs> oh, I'm not. Believe me, if I have a thousand dollars to spend, I'm going to buy like something exciting, like a rowing machine. So. Oh, now you're talking. Well, I already have one of those, <laughs> so I guess I can buy the phone. Well, actually, you your advice on that in a second. But but let's let's do a long bet here. Um, 
in how much? How long do we give it? Six months? Is it a hot thing or a laughing stock? Well, Microsoft thinks it'll be a hot thing because in six months they're doing the duo. Micros right? Well, more like eight months. Microsoft has already said they're going to announce the duo and the neo. One is a folding phone that's kind of the size of a, a i like a iPad, iPad mini yeah with two screens and then one is a folding laptop windows laptops it's nine two nine inch screens the, and they're all in unfolding this is the latest thing from microsoft which is interesting I think it, it gives you more screen real estate which is why our phones have gotten so big in the right. first place right so i think if we can get it as long as the the folding works Right. And does it hurt the glass? Then, right. yeah, I think that's a total, it's yeah. not a fad. And I that's, think that's why where Microsoft it. will win is where they're not dealing with the crease. It's two screens. Way. Yeah. Right. If you look at, at another industry that's dealt with this already, um, portable gaming machines, uh, Nintendo. I thought you were going to say paperbacks. Um, <laughs> but none of them are folding <laughs> screens. They're both dual screen. They're, they're, but but uh, Nintendo um, the hasn't, has not oh, yeah. made a, hasn't made, well, they've made one non-folding uh, portable gaming system yeah, like in the, the past folding. 20 years. Yeah. And the Switch is very successful. Yep. That's not folding, but it's very well, successful. The, yeah. Uh, I they, think they totally I really like the, I like the looks of the form factor. I think the potential is there. It's unknown how long the glass will last or if it will start looking creased and you know dirt will get into it. And all, There's all sorts of potential issues. I That's why I'm going to buy it. I'm going to take the bullet. And take the hit, and I'll let you know. You I know? will put my money on the Samsung before I put it on I would, the Motorola, though. I completely, well, we already know the Razer's a flop. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> I think yeah. the Razer's more expensive. It's using plastic OLED and, and doesn't have the glass surface. They even warn you there'll be creases. There'll be, there'll be <laughs> puckers. And I mean, is that just a bit CNET of CYA was able to break for it. them? You know, say, hey, hey, yeah, now we want to let you case. know we're going to have some creases. Who says this? This is Andrew at Central says the Motorola Razer is as useful as a dull razor blade. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much that was the universal review. Uh, interestingly, now no one has the phone, at least the embargo hasn't been lifted if they do, but nobody's been writing about the Z Flip. But the people who saw it at the demo room yesterday and spent half an hour with it said, mm. you know, I, maybe this is something here. Right. Some potential there. Well, also requires software that understands the phone when it's half open. Mm -hmm. Google's Duo does. Duo, you know, that's the f the video calling program that is on Android. I love that. If you're on a Moto Flip, and by the way, Google put this into Android some time ago. They this was, they've got they've been ready for folding phones for a few months. So if you have the Flip kind of like a little laptop, mm -hmm. the top part will be video, the bottom part will be controls. So it won't split your picture in half. It'll have a little smaller picture, which means you could put it on the table and aim it at you as you would a laptop, so the camera can be positioned. It's infinite, you know, and let you multitask angles. on something else. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Google. They also Google also made a YouTube uh, player that this is a little less useful. Has the comments or the chat below it and the video above it. But I would I want to work on a a Twit app that would play our video at the top and have a little chat room at the bottom. Ooh, IRC at the bottom. Wouldn't that be Ooh. cool? You probably wouldn't All want right, to type on question. it, but you might be able to read it. Yeah. Will Apple ever have a folding phone? I asked that yesterday on MacBreak Weekly. Uh, is this an Apple aesthetic? I don't think it is myself. I think they, they're they going to put their money towards like a heads-up display, personally. This feels like Ooh. this type of real screen real estate feels like a stopgap motion to like putting the internet around us. I think that's just if, me. if other people manage to make a successful flip phone, Apple will make a successful, will make another flip. Phone. Oh my God, Yay! that's a scary shot. Carsten Cam. Carsten Cam. Are you in your mom's basement right now, Carsten? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we let Carsten work at home one day a week. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I think Apple has not made glasses yet because no one's made successful glasses right. yet. That's for right. Well, and I, I think I do they think made there's the HomePod a... because other people made successful voice assistants. True. As soon okay. as somebody, as soon as two or three people start making money on a flip phone, they'll make a flip phone. And that's I fair. think, I think the experience with the HomePod shows that if Apple just does it because everyone else is doing, it, as opposed to having some idea. sort of quality vision, yeah. that it's not an awesome I idea. I agree with you. I I think that. It, we, we don't know yet if that is a new form factor for the phone that everybody's going to want. If it does become that, of course Apple will make one. 
Well, it doesn't have to be the form factor that everyone wants. What's nice about phones is now that you've achieved market saturation, you can start to differentiate right. between different. And Apple will always be a laggard there. They won't. That's Carson's mm -hmm. point. They're not going to innovate in that space. Um, I'm going to bet that I can make fun of you within a year. <laughs> and I, and what will I, you I be, think you could. What will you be making fun of me for? So you're saying there won't be any more flip phones after this one? Is uh, that what I you're think saying? There'll, be a, there'll be a wacky little... Oh, you think it's Google Glass. Um, I see what you're it's, saying. It's, well, it's well, certainly yeah. possibly the, the... These are all the next curved phones. Right, remember curved There's, TVs? Remember, mm -hmm. remember curved yeah, they didn't, LG they didn't curved last. phones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Nobody, buy, nobody makes those anymore. Oh, yeah, that was they made curved phones very yeah. briefly. Yeah. I remember that. Maybe, but that was a terrible remember idea. Remember phones that used to have stuff you could do on the edge? Oh, they yeah, the Samsung Edge. Yeah, they, no, they, they still make that, but they, they, it's not quite nobody, as... nobody, yeah, it's not as... I always turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> they still, that's still part of the Samsung UI, but uh, I do turn that off. I don't know. Not, I think they did not phones. say anything Here's the about difference. that at, on, at their thing for the S20. Here's the difference. I think you can make a strong case for the practicality of a folding phone. Instead of having something this big, I have, I'm pointing at my iPhone, mm -hmm. I have something half as big that I could put in my and pocket. Twice as thick. Well, it's a little thicker. You're right. Thick, the thickness might is an unknown, and the hinge is an unknown, and the screen is an unknown. But assuming it's kind of compact and feels comfortable, and I could put it in my hip pocket. Or well, here's the other question: It's opening. It. How how much is it going to be a pain with one hand opening it? Can't, according so you, to you can't the flip it. early can't reviews, do it, the it does not flip. That it, the hinge is right. stiff. Too tight. Never it takes flip. two hands in to open okay, it. Really. See that that oh, right there. Oh. That's a deal killer. Oh, you, oh really? You <laughs> want to do the mouth, Star Trek? Open it with your mouth and your hand. And... Yeah, if, I, if I can't be James T. Kirk with that phone, no way. It's a good no point. Way. So you're because you guys are strap lock. hangers. So you're strap yeah. hanging on the subway. If I can't, yeah, hang, right. if I more importantly, if I can't hang it up with a flip. Oh yeah. No oh, way. you can't do be, that. I want to be able to hang hands. up, hang up with somebody yeah. just like that. No, well, that's dude. that's fun, but there is a practical point of like you have to be able to control your phone and work with it with one hand. You're going to all be jealous because I'm going to be sitting here next week with a nice <laughs> purple <laughs> flip phone. It's going to be sitting right here, and you're going to say, "Well, that is kind of oh, that's." Well, kinda I'll be nice. jealous but, for about a week, and then I'll be laughing. At you. I but think it's going to be great. Isn't it's, it fascinating though that we've gone from the original razor that was you know four inches flip to the candy bars that did not flip anymore, right. to the bigger screen, right. to the Note being even bigger. And now we're saying the Note's too I big and we're going to flip them back down. The note. I bought the Note, <laughs> the very first Note. I bought every Note since because mm -hmm. I like a big screen. The Note was nice. This is a 6.7-inch screen. It's a little tall, but it's a 6.7-inch screen in a form factor the size of a pocket which, square. Which I is like an inch that and a idea. half bigger than the first Note. Yeah. Yeah. I like that idea. But we want to fold it in I, half. I acknowledge there's unknowns. I don't know what the screen, folding the screen is crazy. Is that going to work? Is the hinge going to be too stiff? Uh, you know, will software use this? The But I think it, on the face of it, that form factor is, is sensible, unlike a curved freaking phone, which is just goofy. It's like a banana phone. And getting back to what you said earlier about Apple being in China and what it sort of led to with other tech, it's, n it's interesting to see what could happen with these uh with this technology on other appliances and things like that. Samsung you know? in, has been invested. It's actually a sad story. Samsung decided they wanted to make folding screens a few years ago and invested hundreds of millions of dollars. Somehow it leaked out and the other companies like uh, Royal mm -hmm. and uh, Huawei and Xiaomi we started making folding phones. The Royal was that. nice though. Yeah, well, they're using that technology that Samsung Royal spent hundreds of millions of dollars. Nice. <laughs> nice is an interesting For choice. For a theme, well, you well, like the Royal? We, we saw the saw at CES yeah. Was we nice. saw the second generation yeah. Royal. You like that? Yeah, it did. But when it, it had the screen like rippled when you opened it, because it has to have a little get it stretches right. Super thin. Yeah. Here's I my think other fear. You're all going to be jealous of me. That's all I'm saying. People in Before New York, day. it's a new, it's a new <laughs> jerky thing to do in New York is to stop in the sidewalk because you've got to open up your oh, phone. I freaking hate that. <laughs> Keep moving, people. Keep moving. It was like right, that at well, CES. There were all these people looking at their phone, moving a mile an hour. I want to hit them in the head. 
We need a thing. You know, like in uh, Quaker churches where the guy, the beetle, goes around, and if you fall asleep, he bops you on the head? I want one of those. Well, what happens to people on the sidewalks now that stop and just look at their normal phones? People run into I them. I would assume in New York. No, they, they don't, just, stop. don't stop. They Bump slow them. down to one mile an hour. Yeah, I hate well, that. Are, aren't people, like, kind of nudging them as they walk by? I hope so. No, we're just growling at them. Okay. <laughs> Right. And, and trying York, to and, and doing, doing what you do with a car, it's like it's 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 what do you call hate driving? Um, um, what do you call that? Road one? rage. You, road road rage. rage. Yeah, there's sidewalk rage. <laughs> hate so, driving. No, hate what drive. I do is I go. Nyarm! Just to yeah, cut them off. Cut I them off. around you. You cut them yes. off. Exactly. Oh, yeah, gosh. exactly. I cut them off. So passive aggressive is what you're saying. Oh, I'm not passive aggressive, man. I am aggressive. <laughs> no, ag aggressive, aggressive. <laughs> yeah, do you grumble New York. when you're when you're road raging them? Do you go grumble, grumble, grumble? <laughs> oh, remember my kids used to hate me yelling at the car. <laughs> they can't hear you, Dad. <laughs> hmm. I'm waiting. Yeah, there'll be sidewalk rage over this thing. Old man yells. There's the already cloud. there's already sidewalk rage. I mean, come on. But you're saying that as if a lot of a lot of units are going to sell. Oh, in rich New York, where they want to show off, they have this. You think so? Oh yeah. Show offs. There, this is there in L.A. There's going to be a lot of people with this phone. Okay. I many, have, many, uh, many, many, many years ago, when I was uh, the one time I was on moonlighting, mm -hmm. and I was at the Paramount Studios, and I got to go and have lunch. And I went in. It was, it was this was way before the cell, the, the real cell phone. People had to carry a whole case that was this big with a handle and yeah. the antenna and all things. Phones. Right? They would they would walk into the into the commissary there, and that you know just have their assistant call them. Right. Of so course. they could be so important just so to have can, a phone. Yeah. I have a, yeah. a, a picture Posers. actually of Jeff yelling at somebody as he tries to walk around them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, get out of my way! I, I, get my off way. my sidewalk, kids! Yeah. I just figure, uh, I, I just don't know that many units are going to sell. I figure boss man over yeah, here would be, right. be one of the I'll people the buying it. That's maybe 20 why I'm going to the store at midnight, <laughs> getting in line for it, because they said limited quantities. I think that this is going to sell out. You, you're you going to come back to me in a couple of weeks and say, Oh, I think you're right. I want this phone. Well, Sorry, too late. They won't oh. be out. There won't be any more for months. Limited quantities no. could be like two at every store. I know. That's right. why I'm going to be in line. That's why I'm ordering them right away. I don't. I bet you this is hard to make. Yeah, I bet you're right. I'm just saying. <laughs> I love that sarcastic look on Miss Stacy's it, face. <laughs> <laughs> it also is the best selfie cam ever made. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's like, go on. Because on the other, no, on the flip side of it, tell has me a, more. Did Did you see the demo? Well, you don't need a you don't need a tripod anymore. You can. And just I don't need a tripod. On, I you can, can put it on the desk in front of you. In fact, it's what we're back. using to light Karsten right now. <laughs> Look, here's me. Here's me on my on my nice selfie cam. I don't have to go like this anymore. True. I've got Karsten cam. I, right. I want to see if I can find the <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> The Samsung image of... I, li uh, I like that Carson's embracing Carson Cam. That's good. <laughs> embracing? I can't shut him up. How do we demand? <laughs> He's on some new meds this week. I don't I am uh, on some new meds. Uh, <laughs> He's very, very happy. <laughs> um, this is... Extra B vitamins. <laughs> you know, I had to cut back on the B vitamins. Magnesium. I did. Magnesium's oh, key. I'm all over the magnesium. Magnesium oh, doesn't no, make you no, happy. No, it like, no. makes you relax. Makes you poop. <laughs> Oh, well, that's the problem. I, so time. I thought, I thought that I had a big problem, and I I was taking magnesium for my heart, and the doctor said, "Have you heard of milk of magnesia?" Yeah, that's made out oh, of oh, magnesium. Yeah. Cut it out. Next, I was like, like months. I was taking some. It was the wrong, my wife said, "No, no, no, that's the wrong one. That doesn't do any good. You have to take this one." I never tied it together. Don't worry, I won't get any detail. But <laughs> no, I was not no, well. I know. I know. You don't have to. I already months. said it. Yeah, months. Yeah. Should ask Leo. <laughs> I could have told you that. This week in regularity. I'm trying to, this week in regularity. It's a good show. It's a show I want to do. No, I'm definitely glad I'm not TDing this show. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out of here in a couple minutes. Um, oh, so funny. Where, where, I'm looking for the, uh, so this thing has this little screen Any other on story it. to talk about? Oh, no. I'm looking for the selfie. So that's Duo, right? So the, the guy's talking on Duo and then it has the controls down here, which is kind of neat. Um, I'm trying to show the selfie 
The selfie. So, okay, so this, is, this yeah, little screen a little... here is a screen. So if you oh. use this as a camera, a selfie camera, it'll have a little tiny picture of you with your head cut off, your forehead cut off, which I think is kind of neat. That is neat. I think you And I like the this. idea of it being able to put it in more places so you're not getting that up-the-nose view of people right. when you're trying to talk right. to them on Duo. I That's think nice. that they've made actually a pretty strong case for what the flipping, what the folding it's more Although what we really need is like a little drone cam for our selfies so we can just have this action, they have right? They yeah, make those them. out there. Right. They make right. them. Well, I know they make drones, but I want my cam my phone just to be like... like oh, you want it to simulate that. I see what you're saying. I want it to have like little Quidditch wings, <laughs> golden yes. snitch wings pop out. And it's like... Oh, <laughs> man. That's what they should make, a golden snitch phone. <laughs> oh, I would buy that. You potter. How heads. many years? How many years before somebody comes on stage? Oh, one more thing. It flies. It flies. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. It flies. Forget self. Forget flying cars. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> I want a flying phone. Um. All right. What else? Uh. We did viruses. Oh, yeah, I was, I was partly phones. playing the Leo uh, role of. Um, no. Nope. Arguer. Oh, I thought you said this, this week in regularity again. No. Uh, <laughs> FTC investigating Google, and they're not just looking at now. They're look going back through Google's acquisitions. In fact, not just Google. Uh -oh. Turns out there were a number of acquisitions made by Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft. Uh, and Apple. And Apple that flew under the radar. They were so small they didn't have to get approval now. The FTC has decided to go back to 2010 and get information that wasn't previously required under existing antitrust regulations. This is what I was saying before. Is I mean, One has to wonder about the motive. Sure feels like harassment. Of course, on the other hand, the president yesterday pointed out that MAGA is, stands for Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> so there. I'm sure they're delighted. Right. <laughs> Some, somebody Let's said, get those hats made up. He's not actually Google. Either. I think this is why Google changed the alphabet. Yeah, yeah, he's actually alphabet. So it's ah. well. Then, then he'll just make it alphabet because ah. you don't have to mention Amazon. Amazon. Uh, but do 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 do. Mr. Jarvis, you said this sounds like harassment. Yep, it yeah. does. It yep. does kind of. Yep. Although there are, I mean. I don't know how you would undo this, but there are several acquisitions, and they they talk about the ones, especially where they bought the company and shut it down. Um, I, yeah, I but they they didn't investigate like, it at the time. It's a little ten years later. Ten years to, now. Oh yeah, yeah. it's just doesn't. And they, what are you do not, about it? I mean, well, and that's the thing. He's like, we don't know what we're going to do about it. He gets on the you know on the conference call. He's like, well, we're going to investigate. Could unwind it. We yeah. could, but I mean, as a journalist. It's exciting. You're going to have access to public uh, uh, transcripts and files that otherwise we won't know. So yeah. there's going to be an interesting look at this sort of thing. Although while this is happening, it'll be interesting to see what happens to deal flow in the Valley. Yep. Tied to that is if Bernie Sanders actually becomes president, which long shot, I know. But if you're a private equity or venture capital firm and either Sanders or Warren have both been pretty vocal that's, about changing That's why laws. it's a long shot, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, because, I know. you know, every billionaire in the country, every hedge fund in the country, all that money, that dark money is going to start pouring into anybody but mm -hmm. Bernie, anybody but Liz. Because but in 2020, so if, if you're really worried about that happening as a VC, you're like, holy crap. I need to, one, have my plan B, which is funding all these other things, but you also need to, or sorry, that's plan A. Plan B is prepping your stuff to sell so you can get your gains before your tax yeah. law changes. So. Right. Can we do my favorite story of the week? I'm going to guess it's the German man who planted his cornfield in a certain... No, no, but you can do that one now. Willst du mich heiraten? Will you marry me? He uh, planted his corn to propose marriage in Hüttenberg, Germany, and Google Maps got it. Now, I don't know. They don't say how he then <clears throat> got his prospective bride to go to this particular Google I Maps think page. I that's photoshopped. 
Really? No, I'm kidding. Well, I'm I kind of wondered too. No, I'm look teasing. at the pixels. That's that's definitely real. Yeah, I'm teasing. Oh, you romantic how you. Long from, how long from doing this to like, are those images uploaded? It's Google about, doesn't it's like. It's about six months. So, okay. I've, so I've, this is I've just kept the an stupidest eye on my, thing ever. On my, I keep an eye on my house. It, it takes about six months. I think that's because you live in the boonies, though. I, I bet you. No, I, this guy planted a cornfield, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big city, man. Hootenberg. The thing is, is if, if, you know you, if you know you're going to propose in the next year, Right. You do this. It gives you a little time out. You First, the this, corn's got to grow. And right. as soon as Honey, it, as soon as hope for are you ever going to marry me? Wait, I got to wait for the corn to grow. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Honey, you ever going to marry me? I got to wait for the satellite to go over. Honey, <laughs> you ever going to marry me? Well, just wait till those pictures show up. <laughs> yeah, we got to break up. I have to go destroy the crop. <laughs> yeah, really. What's that, Stacey? Ego over any sort of someone else's feelings. I mean, really. Really? Actually, he didn't plan for it to be on Google Maps. He ah. was he got his girlfriend to fly a drone over the field last May in Hüttenberg, and then she saw the picture. He told okay. the AP he hadn't intended or expected the image to appear on Google's Maps until an aunt in Canada pointed it out to him. Uh, According okay. to the Associated Press... The German fella and his fiance plan to marry in June. Stefan Schwartz. Hüttenberg. He's gonna Hüttenberg. He's gonna make a fine a house Frau out of her. Take the Frau line and make her a Frau. In Hüttenberg, which is central Germany and apparently has cornfields. A friend of mine is married to a German man and she says that phrase quite often. Fraulein? How, House it? Frau? House Frau. House Frau. It's always funny I'm, to hear it. <laughs> my mom says that all the time, too. <laughs> really? In what context? Yeah. Of being a, a house frau. Yeah, she jokes she about just, it. What does that just mean? Housewife? I mean, yeah. I think yes. so. I mean, my mom yep. wasn't a housewife, but she used it. I don't, she, instead of saying stay at home mom or something like that, you're, you're a house frau. Right. Oh, so it's a little put down. No, no, it wasn't no, a put no, down. No, no. It just no, she's no, no. Just... It was of the time. Is it a put down to call it South Kakalaki? No. Okay. I say it all the time. Okay, I thought you did, and I thought maybe, but then I thought I better ask Aunt before I say it. <laughs> you know, public. South Carolinians will say South Kakalaki. I like it in there. What is that? South Carolina, South Kakalaki. The reason it came up is on <laughs> Saturday Night Live on Saturday. They had a parody of the debates, and they had Joe Biden saying, "Well, I'm going down to South Kakalaki." That's right. And I thought, hmm. <laughs> okay, that's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. so, but I do remember Aunt saying it. Mm -hmm. Pretty common. Yeah. Uh, All right, my Alf favorite story. Yeah. Is the first one under Amazon. Oh yeah, you said you had a story. I laughed Let's, hard. I laughed hard. He laughed hard. What, Day oh, uh, I, of this I, one? I had to say I did too. I put this uh. in. This is a tweet thread from Dade Meslin. Uh, shall we just go through it? Let's just go through just it. Just go through it. I think it's so great. Three weeks ago, I ordered a box of boxes. He wanted some packing boxes from uh, package wholesalers via Amazon Canada. Specifically, I ordered a package of 25 boxes, 6 by 9 by 6. When the delivery arrived at my door, it wasn't a box of boxes. It was a box of chocolate sea salt granola packets. <laughs> I was frustrated, but mistakes happened. So I went to Amazon.ca and saw that I could send the package back for free. I clicked on wrong item shipped, asked them to reship the correct item. A few days later, another box of granola arrived. <laughs> I shipped it back, canceled the order, asked for a refund. Then, starting afresh, reordered the boxes. I figured, ah, what's the chance that would happen again? Two days later, I got a box of Harry Potter coasters. The Marauders Map Coaster said four piece. I kid you not, he says. I kid you not. A package of Harry Potter coasters. I returned the item for reasons I can't fathom. Instead of asking for a refund, well, this guy <laughs> is a glutton for punishment. I again asked them to send me the correct order Stay yesterday. In, you know. I got another box of granola. Today I figured out the problem. The granola company and the coaster company buy their boxes from the same people I'm trying to buy my boxes from. And the barcodes, scanners at Amazon are picking up the old sticker, the old sticker from the box company on the new sticker. 
It's underneath the news ticker. So each time I was getting the wrong order, I was getting one correct box. <laughs> so now I think I should just throw 25 packages of 25 boxes, ship the sea salt granola back to Amazon in plastic bags, and just keep the boxes. There free. you go. Answered. After this thread was posted, he got a nice message from Amazon Help asking me to contact the support team following a 40-minute online chat. No. <laughs> I was told, you've been delivered the wrong items because there was some error, but now you'll get the proper items. I said, the error has been fixed. It wasn't fixed the first three times. I'm skeptical. Amazon said, you will get the correct item. I don't want any more hassles for you. Please do not worry. I reordered the package wholesaler boxes. I'll give you a nickel if you guess what happened next. <laughs> Granola! <laughs> Granola! <laughs> More granola! Oh, I love this so much. I have now received a total of 12 bags of granola, four Harry Potter coasters. I reached out to the package wholesalers, folks. They brushed me off. I'm just going to go to a damn store, you know, a physical place <laughs> with things in it, things you can I see. I would have done that the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah, but the second Canada. Time. This is why Canada is so wonderful. Oh, I love Someone it. with patience. Isn't that hysterical? Nice. Who hopes for the best. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. I just love this. Yeah. 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 So thank By you the way, um, this this story, uh, a number of people, of course, it's Twitter, weighed in <laughs> 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 and with lots of ideas and thoughts and so forth. But it's uh, it's that's a great story. Uh, oh, I'm glad you like that. Yeah, I saw that. I said, yeah, we should talk about this on Twig. Mr. Meslin, I like granola if you care to send yeah. <laughs> chocolate granola you clearly, you clearly yeah. have plenty of it i think he sent it back didn't he say he sent it back i think he got to keep it Canadian, no, he's he, honest. Kept, he kept sending it back kept sending oh he back. kept sending it back yeah. what he should have done uh, is is open open granola box. Ordered, he should have ordered two and then he'd have an extra box so he could send the send just, just keep sending it back and oh yeah in the box he gets he would only have to order it twice 50 times. times yeah right and he'll have he'll have all the boxes. oh bless his heart we didn't, we didn't even uh, talk about Facebook's Twitter account getting hacked. Oh man, and not, not much to say. It was it didn't last that long, but uh, but we, people are just proving a point out there that hey, we don't care secure. how big you are. Yeah, you know we'll yeah. come at the well, security. So do we Actually, know, Stacy? Did Stacy already tell us that Nest was going to require two factor? Was that old news or new news? No, that's new news. I, I have not told you that. Google to force, <laughs> and I think this is after the embarrassment um, that uh, Ring went through because well, Nest went through the same thing a couple months earlier. Oh, I have my own theory on this. You want to hear Stacy's crazy That's theory? That's why I'm asking. Please yeah. do. Okay, so here's my crazy theory. One, they saw everything that was Ring Ring was going through, and all the people were like, it, and this had happened to Nest as well. So Nest had also had their people's cameras hacked because their passwords were stolen, and Nest said, hey, we've been making two-factor available. And Nest has been very proactive and made it available. But what I think is happening is there's a law in California. Um, it's the Device Internet Device Security Act. And that went into effect in January. And one of the provisions of that law is you have to secure your devices based – it has to have reasonable security based on the type of data it's gathering. Oh. So I think – and I made this case, so that's why I think this – because, you know, me. Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> no, it makes sense. The AG has not talked about this yet, but I think companies are looking at this and saying, hey, I do, I mean, a camera that has a full picture into your home mm -hmm. or control over your mm -hmm. thermostat, is that mm -hmm. sort of level of data, like I'm home or not, that feels pretty important. So right. maybe we should make it extra secure. From right. the day one. This isn't in, using in the California cameras. law or anything, right? It's, it's not requiring it that, but they are responsible for securing it. I mean, basically, yeah. that's what the law wants, though. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, no, that's... Yeah, that's I think it's a fine it thing. Doesn't, it doesn't specify two-factor. It the, doesn't the, say how you should do it. And right. here's what the, the really cool part is. If Nest does this, and hopefully if the AG does come out and say, yeah... That's what Everyone we were talking about. Doing this. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Go Nest. Then I think we'll get to a really interesting place where we start seeing things like Google's in a good spot to do like Face ID, or they don't call it Face ID, whatever they do for two, a full multi-factor. Multi and then we get more convenient multi-factor authentication, which would be baller. That was my next question. So I actually how, love How hard that. is this going to be to do? A lot of, a lot of apps on my iPhone well, so because Apple makes the Face ID kit or whatever. So the iPhone will be a tricky one because you can't do Face ID unless you 
are no, no, Apple. No, 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 that's not true. Facebook okay. rolled not this true. out today. Yeah, Apple has. Facebook has all your faces. Apple has. No, no, wait a minute. Yeah, right. <laughs> Apple has um, a kit for it. I don't know what they call it, ID kit or something, that any developer can use. So quite a oh. few of my apps, including my email app, uh, not Apple's, but Canary Mail, my banking app will use Face ID as its second factor. Uh, and that is a hugely convenient uh, thing. And assuming that unlike Facebook, Apple keeps the Face ID information on the phone, mm -hmm. um, I think that's a harmless and excellent way to provide second factor. I like that idea. And this is, and this is honestly a good reason for Facebook stealing your face. It's like this is, this is, they can use it for evil things, selling it to, to advertisers, but they could use it for good things, too, to, to secure your account better. Nobody wants Facebook I, I don't to want do the Facebook Face ID securing, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I don't want Facebook securing any of it. Like, mm -hmm. they, are, they already know when I open apps, which is really yeah, disappointing. If it, if it mm -hmm. keeps people from hacking from my, my Facebook no, account. No, 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 I mean, no. I, no, no, I'd rather no, do it with Google. I'd do it with Apple. Yeah, no Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Do it on device, and both Google and Apple treat that uh, as on right. device. They've, yep. they've got my face already. <laughs> no, yeah, but let's not give them anything else, Karsten. <laughs> I don't have yeah, to give them anything else. No, yes, you do. You every time you use it, you're every giving time them you everything. It, you're telling them, you're telling them, I'm Karsten. I'm on this device. I'm opening this app. I am here. I am in this place. All, I'm giving and them the that Chinese information. Get it, and I'm, all of a sudden, everybody I'm knows you're gay. I'm giving them that Karsten. information every time I open their app. Now, all I would give them is another picture of my face. Hey, hey Karsten. Karsten. Just accuse them of moral panic and that'll really set them off. <laughs> Here's the thing, Carson. You're right. Just, if Facebook uses it to unlock the Facebook app, that's fine. But if you use that to unlock your banking app, now Facebook is getting the signal that you opened the banking app where you opened it. And who else who knows what else? Because you're using well, your no, Facebook just, face ID on your banking I app. I don't want to use face I, Apple's face ID to, lo to log into Facebook. I want to use Facebook. Facebook's yes, you do. Face. Trust me. I, I would rather <laughs> Facebook say, is this you? Let us take a picture of you right now to, to, to log you in. What? No. Carson, you are weird. Uh, is this devil's advocate? Well, we do that. I'm what devil's advocating doing? a little. I'm telling you. Okay, Carson, okay, stay good. in your basement and don't talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying He's to think, secure I'm trying there. To think That's more why it's like not a Jeff. problem. He's... In a secure location. That's right. He, we don't even know where he is. <laughs> no. Facebook suspends accounts in Russia and other countries for misinformation. Oh, that'll help. <laughs> uh, Myanmar, Russia, and Iran. Those accounts are now suspended. So I guess I'll just have to remake them in the U.S. Like, that's hard to do. They're doing everything they can, right, Jeff? Yeah, we're screaming at them to do something. They do something, and we say, oh, that's not going to help. Well, it isn't. Yeah, it's an do. effort. I've got to be honest, it's we, not. I guess we're supposed to appreciate the effort, right? Well, I mean, there is a there is value in making the transaction cost higher by shutting things down uh, in a constant and repeatable way. But, yeah. <laughs> is it the most effective thing? Probably it's, not. It's better than nothing. That's about all you can say on it. <laughs> Do you, now, if I would show this new Facebook uh, design, I, but I, I'm not on Facebook. Jeff, you don't like it? I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. Some Well, not everybody's getting it. Some users will get the new redesign. It will roll out later this oh. year. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. You can enable, it says, the new look by logging into Facebook and selecting see Facebook beta at the top of your news feed. But I don't not, see it. Yeah, so not everyone will have that. That's, that's, okay. that's what Lifehacker says. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm hard for me know, to care was, deeply well, the reason about this. Up there is we used to actually do stories with somebody to redesign. Now we just don't care. Who cares? Yeah. <clears throat> so jaded, like, like ant were jaded. Did you guys Redesigns hear, okay and it was an excellent, I had stopped listening to the daily for a while, but they did an excellent one this week interviewing Kashmir Hill about her experience. Maybe it was last week about her experiences with Clearview AI. Did you guys listen to that? Highly recommend it. I have uh, to listen to it at double speed. I know, because Michael Barbera the doesn't slow do it. West but the good news her. is it's not Michael Barbera doing the interview. Oh. And that's she does somebody else good. from the New York Times okay. does the interview. In any event, Kashmir, who is also a New York Times reporter, <clears throat> had some very interesting experiences with Clearview. Clearview is the 
mysterious company that's been scraping YouTube, Facebook, in fact, the Google, whole public Twitter. internet for face images of you, which they then can sell to uh, law, enforcement. law enforcement, their face recognition technology, they claim, and it seems to be the case, is like 99.6% accurate. Weirdly, though, Kashmir got a friend who was in the police department to enter in a picture of her, and nothing came up. Hmm. Zero. And then, for her? even more really? for her, and then even more weirdly, he got suspended from his Clearview account saying you've been searching for a New York Times reporter. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and the irony. then she confronts this, she finally gets an interview with somebody claiming to be the founder and CEO of Clearview, which I think is still in doubt. It, who knows who really is. But he says, oh, uh, yeah, that was a bug. <laughs> She says a bug. Is this going to turn out like Cambridge Analytica that, that, that everybody was scared of and they actually couldn't do anything? No, no, they're very good. This is the problem. They're very, very good because they've been collecting billions of images from the public internet. By the way, which we know is now legal thanks to uh, HiQ's thanks uh, to LinkedIn. Su successful suit against LinkedIn, where the appeals court for. said you can scrape uh, anything that is like, well, but wait a minute, that seems reasonable. If it's publicly available and a company figures out a way to suck it up, uh, I don't know. Jason think, Howell I and I talked about this. pictures are a different case, though. You can, uh, like... Are they? Uh, because uh, uh, my a picture I take and that I give to Facebook is owned by me and Facebook. It's not owned by the public. But it's available in the public. The public it's, it's, visible. it's not about availability. It's about ownership. Well, but uh, you own your face, but when you go out on the street, long-standing law says if, if you have they, no right to privacy. If mm -hmm. they pay... Facebook and me for that picture. They don't pay Facebook. Then they can use it. They don't if pay if Facebook. If they don't pay they Facebook, scrape then it. it's illegal for them to use it. I disagree. You're wrong. Uh, because... No, that, under that doctrine, Karsten, then your you better your your VCR is your DVR is illegal. Because that was the argument that putting it up from here to there in a database the, was the same as no, copying. No, because and I'm using. not making money off of my DVR. If I if 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 I'm DVRing, you're robbing thing, them of money if you didn't I'm go buy the DVRing something and, and pay and charging someone to look at my DVR, that's illegal. If uh, they're charging people to look at my picture, so that's illegal. You can't make money off of other people. We put methamphetamine products. in Carson's coffee <laughs> to see if he'd notice. Carson's actually right. It, it, what have we done here? <laughs> well, this, is, this is how the law works. What have this we is, This is legal doctrine. This, this, this has been established. Now, what we could see is, and what we probably will see, is lawyers coming up with new legal doctrine around these sort of interactions. But there is established case law about this. So even though we may not agree with it, that... We don't have to. <laughs> Clearview on their website says, searches the open web. Clearview does not and cannot search any private or protected inflow, including your, including in your private social media accounts. It's search, not surveillance. <laughs> Clearview is an after-the-fact research we'll give that tool. Person a bonus. Clearview is not a surveillance system and is not built like one. For example, analysts upload images from crime scenes and compare them to publicly available images. The most interesting, one of the, another interesting thing in this daily uh, piece with uh, Kashmir Hill is how useful, and this is the challenge, Clearview has been to police departments. Mm -hmm. They, uh, she gave as an example, a child trafficker. They were, you know, couldn't find this guy, couldn't find this guy, had a picture of him, submitted to the Clearview database, and Clearview was able, the picture they had of him, I think is in the back, the background, like a, like a dim, his face is turned. It's not a good picture, but Clearview was able to track him down and they were able to arrest the guy. So this is what complicates it. It's very valuable. It's a great tool for law enforcement. Clearview says we only give this to law enforcement. We don't give it to the public. Uh, uh, we only do it with a legal investigation. All right. So, Karsten, your, your images on Facebook are strictly private. Make them private if you don't saying? want to be scraped. Yeah. If they pay me for it, then they can... Then well, there isn't a system to do that, so make them private. That's not what I'm asking. Legally, that's, not what legally asking. that's not what I'm asking. That's like saying then Google, under that doctrine, under the Karsten doctrine, then Google can't scrape... You're, 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 I found out you're German. Karsten is a German name, after all. Uh, that's like the German publisher saying, Google, if you scrape my site to link to me, you must pay me for that. Yes, and they passed a Same law. Same doctrine. 
And exactly, and they passed a law to, to do that. And then and no, and, and then, then and the Germans paid. realized, oh wait, this law sucks. Doesn't work. So, yeah. So no, you mm -hmm. can you can that's okay. You can use my stuff for free. I'm I'm looking it would at break every search engine in the world because that's how Google collects its search yeah. index. It's not a doctor we want. Um, no, Google has has pushed back on that argument, saying we actually only scrape things that say we can scrape them. They, they Same have, here. They have, actually, you Clearview, can. Clearview said that to Google, and Google said no. If you, you can, with robots.txt, say, don't, don't put this in my index, but you have to do that. I would submit that's no different than you saying these are private photos mm. on Facebook. It's the same thing. And Clearview says if you give us that indication, we don't scrape right. it. Yes, we exactly. can't scrape it. That's what, they, that's what should happen. Clearview, but then, should, but, Clearview, Clearview now has been told we don't want you to do this. So oh, because Facebook's saying it. it is a blanket thing, right? Yes. Right. Well, what about high Q scraping LinkedIn data? You think that was a bad thing too? Um, which what data did they scrape? I don't remember what they were. It, I think they they were scraping. Um, so you're going to say it depends on what they get? It it depends oh, on. That's a tough oh. one. Who owns mm -hmm. what they get? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jason Howell and I talked about this uh, last week on Tech News Weekly. Uh, I particularly don't pay attention to this type of surveillance talk or what have you, but back in Carolina, actually just a few miles from where I live, there was a, a riot in a convenience store. Some, a bunch of people went in there and just ramshed, just, just tore the place up and the attendee was injured. They threw something at her and hurt the attendee, oh but no one could be identified. Hmm. The police were a block away attending to pedestrians that had just gotten hit by a drunk driver yikes, yikes. so it was just it was a, a mess chaotic mess but no one could be identified and i saw this Clearview uh article and i was thinking man th this would have been helpful to find the idiots that went into that store and did what they did you know but then there's other people saying no they shouldn't have this access to this public data out here and, and scraping and being able to identify and help right. out law enforcement but it's helpful but it was truly helpful and that's yeah. that was Kashmir's point. Is right. you know, and this is complicated. All right, we're gonna have a new Yo. segment on the show. Oh, what? I was gonna say we talked about this last week. Get a warrant. Get a warrant. Get a warrant. We're gonna have a new segment on the show. Moral panic or privacy violation? <laughs> you ready? It's time to play our game. Ready? Uh, you're a big Wacom tablet guy. You use a Wacom tablet. Mm -hmm. Robert Heaton, who is a software engineer, was curious about why the Wacom tablet asked permission <laughs> to send stuff back to the home office. Mm -hmm. In version 3.1 of its privacy policy, Wacom said, would you mind if, <laughs> if we sent a few, <laughs> I'm, I'm reading uh, Robert's uh, blog post, bits and bobs of data from my computer to Google Analytics, including aggregate usage data, technical session information, information about my hardware device. The half of my heart that cares about privacy sank. The other half of my heart, the half that enjoys snooping on snoopers and figuring out what they're up to, leapt. <laughs> this is a great post. It is. You read the post. <laughs> yeah. So it turns out Wacom sends back, and he had to, by the way, do some real rigmarole. Wireshark. Wireshark and burp. Uh, he was able, though, to figure out that uh, the burp suite that uh, they were sending information about every single application he opened back to the home office. He thought that was a bit of a violation. Now, it turns out you don't have to, you can block it and the, and the tablet works. He says, mm -hmm. basically, this tablet is a glorified mouse. Why does it need to mm -hmm. tell the home office? So aren't they writing software around these well, applications? Well, very good, Mr. Job? Moral Panic, because mm -hmm. there is a point. The Wacom tablet changes its behavior depending on what app you're running. Right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So, moral panic or privacy violation? You be the judge. It's panic. Lock in my answer. And it's also, <laughs> you opt in on that, too. Um, yeah, they do tell you, him. And if you opt out, you still can use the you wacom. still can use it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Probably not as well. So, this is, this is one of the reasons why I was upset with uh, EFF, with the, their Ring investigation, where they were like, they're sending data to, like, Google Analytics. I'm like... Yeah, I'm not going to get upset about that. That right. is like device behavior so you can adapt yeah. and make sure things perform well. And and do I think you should disclose? Yes. 
But nowadays you want, you you want a more kind of have panic? to, don't you? I mean, isn't that part of the California privacy protections and the GDPR? You have to say when you're gathering that kind of data. I think uh, so. You do if, if you're if you have a California citizen, but like I'm not a California citizen. Well, but I'm not going to gonna, I'm not going to spend the energy to figure out if you're a California <laughs> citizen or not before disclosing. Nope. So it has the effect of of disclosure. In, it would actually be quite easy to figure out if I am a California citizen. Mm. I mean, it would. You you just you could basically be a you could be using a VPN. I wouldn't know. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Or your yeah. or your uh, ISP. Uh, and IP geolocation is notoriously bad. Right, for how long? For how long in the early days did did, did every site think we were all from Virginia because we went through right. AOL? Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Sure. Anyway, I think you're right. I think it's moral panic, but it was an interesting story. And actually, are right, you want to, you want to know what I'm panicking about? What? So Britain has decided that Ofcom, the broadcast regulator, is now going to regulate speech on the internet. Oh, that's not good. Oh dear. No, that's that's like though. giving the FCC. Regulation. Imagine that's, that's, if you couldn't use the, the seven the, dirty words uh, while you're at home. Rot row. Yep. Rot row. <laughs> It'd be like the good place. Which Shut I the still, front door. I still haven't started watching that show yet. Oh, and it's so delightful. It's so good. You, of all people. From the I've been trying to cue it up, but I haven't gotten show. around to Watch it, Watch it though. quick. It's going to get taken off of Netflix pretty soon. Oh, is it? Because it's, it's, yeah. it's moving to it's Peacock? NBC. It's oh, going to become yeah. part of Peacock. So do you think they're not going to get season four and I should just buy it? I did, just so I could that do is, it. That is, by the way, my solution. If a show is that sure. good, uh, instead of subscribing to some Fakatka service, I'll, I'll pay for forever. What's that word again? Fakatka. <laughs> It's like kakalaki, only different. Uh, only Yiddish. I would, I would just buy the show, right? right? So I want to buy a show. There's a show that PB. I haven't watched it in all honesty. A PBS show in years. There's a PBS show about Germany after the war that I actually want to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way I can watch it is if I if I sign up for a full year uh, of contribution right. to PBS. PBS does that, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, no. I'd yeah. buy the show. I'd pay for the show. Fine. I bought Eyes on the Prize, but that's a PBS show. Yeah, I think, you know, for a long time, HBO would, like, you couldn't buy The Sopranos until, like, a year after it aired and stuff. That's just throwing money away, really, right? They're getting better yeah. at that, though. Yeah, I, I think they are. There's a lot of stuff I can that's buy on, on Amazon now. That's right. A lot of movies come, come, as soon as they're on DVD, I can buy them on as Amazon. As it should be, right. Yeah, I can't yeah, rent them PBS. yet. Or I, I can, or I can rent them. them. Right. Or I can rent them soon after. You, yeah, it goes to sale first, and then like two weeks That's later. So you smart because it. they know how impatient I am, and right. I always and I and the, and the rationale is well, it would have cost more to see it in the theater, so I'm just going to buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what have I got really? <laughs> right? I don't have a DVD. I don't have anything that could be yanked away from me at but any you time. Don't, so don't true. Need it? So, so I don't true. really own it. Like, no, I'd I don't. Need just it. if I want to watch a show, I just want to pay to watch, watch the it. show. Right? I, it's like. I used to get everything at, at back in my day. Oh, we had boy. Blockbuster. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I just is go kind of want to have turning another... into me. Is that Damn what's going on? What did you put is this in this the drink? metamorphosis? <laughs> <laughs> He's going through the metamorphosis. He's going to shed his skin. What drugs is he taking? No, actually, the truth I'm is. I'm in a manic phase this week. I'm the, sorry. The truth is. Uh, he's the next clone, oh, and there is a certain amount of you know training that involved, uh, and then oh, you know, I thought Ant was the next clone. <laughs> he's the next but one. So there, so we have to constantly have a, a chain. And you're then, the spare, not the air. He's, <laughs> he's the spare, not the air. Did you just make that up? That's very good. Or is that's that a title? The, that's the unique. That's, that's the UK monarchy. Show that's title. the air and a spare. The air and the spare. I like it. So, so Andrew's the spare. No, no, who's the spare? Harry's the heir. Andrew, yeah. and then and, and, uh, Will's the, the spare. No, Will's the heir. Harry's the spare. spare. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is, is the Karsten we see today Karsten or the clone? He's the clone, but he hasn't shed his skin. He has to, the metamorphosis right. will happen. The beard will fall off. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, does, is, is, he, is it a true metamorphosis? You don't like actually want to watch it. They're a little slimy when they first no. come when, out. When, when the bow tie comes off, it all yeah. oozes out. <laughs> the bow tie. <laughs> the bow tie is actually holding the chrysalis together. If you pull the bow tie, the whole thing just... 
Oh, this goes. Oh. <laughs> no, no, don't do it. We no, can't don't, take it. No, oh, no, 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 no. Look, he really ties them. We're not ready for it's it. It's not a clip on. We're not ready. Wow. <laughs> so really, I've never really, seen it untied. Offcom. What is Offcom? Who is Offcom? Offcom is the British uh, broadcast regulator. So they're the FCC or the CRTC of Great Britain. And what they're gonna what they're gonna use is the online harms report, which I've screened about before. Oh, which no. is not only going to have you take down illegal content, but legal and harmful content and the, the platform will have a duty of care it could be legal but it's still harmful and harmful. it gets so, taken so the, the, the model that somebody said today was it's like whole foods having a duty of care to stop you from getting that cheese oh lord but i want that cheese well, it's bad for you. No, but it's good. I have good. a duty of care to stop you. It tastes good. Because if I don't stop you, I'm going to get fined, maybe even shut down. Oh my CEO my might go to jail. Oh, mm. my God. Mm. Not because you did anything illegal or I did anything illegal, mm. just because some nanny now, somewhere thought it was harmful. According uh, to The Guardian, these new regulations apply only to companies that allow the sharing of user-generated content. So Facebook, Twitter. Because our speech Twitter. is now... Um, uh, you know, obviously dangerous to, to, to democracy, A. B, that content can include news and your shows and anything else. So Wait a minute. It doesn't include that. my show because there's I don't allow the sharing of user-generated content. So well, I if your show is shared oh, and it is deemed to be harmful. Then Twitter could be responsible. But mm -hmm. you, you get taken down because Twitter is so – I'm ah. not taking any chances. Carson's been Those saying geeks, this man, all day. That's dangerous all day, stuff, Carson's man. been telling me it's just a matter of time before podcasts, you know, get get taken off. I don't know what he, he's got some sort of thing that like, they'll keep people from downloading the shows. Other people's content. Oh my God, <laughs> he's changing. We will, we will, we will get our podcasts taken down. If he sounds a little muffled, it's because the chrysalis is for slipping. The same reason that YouTube's being taken yeah. down. That is really a terrifying mask. What the heck are Car we looking Carson, at? Carson, why do you have that? Oh, that's a good Nightmare question. Nightmare inducing mask. <laughs> that's a really good question. Mean? This is the real me without the Botox. Okay. <laughs> I told you, don't. The Botox? Don't pull on the Bohar. The Botox. <laughs> I love it. Um, Alrighty. I think. Wait a minute. Somehow I'm getting old stories. Am I looking at the right one? No, I didn't. We did last week. We did. Didn't we do Mike Bloomberg paying influencers last week? I think we did. Yes. I think we did. Um, oh, we don't have any advertisements. Are uh, we? Are we? Are we taking our political stance again? Yes, we, we are. have to rub that in. Stacey. No, I was. I was. You know me. I'm I'm trying to keep I'm like, should we be doing it? Does your I'm, podcast ever air without advertising? Um like ever? I think No. Yes, the answer is we no. have it. Is you always very have rarely. ads. Yeah, Some very ad. rarely. <sighs> oh, I'm Thanks, sorry. Debbie Downer. Thanks <laughs> I know, a lot. Like, Jesus, <laughs> Bringing the I'm moon sorry. right down. Making us all sad. Good work, Stacy. Well, I think the market has spoken. That's all. I'm just saying. The market doesn't. Well, that's our like farewell the show. How? Yeah, it it's been fun. Like it's it's fun, but it was over. Will Spotify ruin? I have started reading Matt Stoller's big blog because he talks about monopoly. I don't know if it's good or not, but I enjoy reading it. I really enjoy reading it. His newest piece. It has contains an interesting thesis that I wanted to run by you, particularly you, mm. Jeff. Mm. Uh oh. Will Spotify ruin podcasting? And what he's likening podcasting to is the golden days of the internet, 2000 to 2006. Blogs. The Blog blogs. Rules. If RSS. You built, if you built a highly trafficked web property, you could finance yourself by selling advertising. Uh, it was a three tiered system. Production, distribution, and advertising operated in vertically separated layers. By the way, this is very similar to the podcast market yep. today. Sounds very There familiar. were some industry players like the New York Times, which both distributed and sold its own ads, but no one had dominant power in any one layer. However, along come Google and Facebook. And what happened, why the open web and publishing began dying, what happened was... Uh, their advertising companies, their middlemen in the flow of information. Google gets 80% of its revenue from ads. For Facebook, 98%. And 
And what they did from 2004 to 2014 was, if, if, and this is the question for you, if this is an accurate description of this, because I believe you were there, was <laughs> to redirect the flow Branch. of ad money from publishers to themselves. His thesis is, by acquiring gatekeeping power and distribution, Google is a gatekeeper in search, online video and maps, Facebook a gatekeeper in social networking. So this is the thesis. To get to users, you've got to go through Google and Facebook. And what happened was advertisers started to realize, well, if I want those valuable New York Times readers, I could buy an ad in the New York Times, but wouldn't it be easier just to buy the search results from Google at a lower cost and still get the same views, same mm -hmm. eyeballs? The money flows, instead of flowing to the New York Times, flows to Google. In fact, that's why the New York Times no longer relies on ad revenue. They've, they've really they worked hard. Up. Yeah, they've really worked hard to to beef up revenue through subscriptions. And they're doing a pretty good job of it, but that's not a viable uh, playbook for a lot of uh, journalism and publishing. With, when most users going through either Google properties or Facebook properties, corporations could decommodify the ad value of a publisher ad slot. No need to advertise in the Times. Just buy it on Google. So, first of all, does that... I mean, that no. sounds like a simplification, but is that roughly... It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a radical simplification on a few levels. Uh, one is that publishers could have had their own first-party data. They don't, they don't. They treat people as a mass, as I say often. And Google and Facebook have data about users. That data is now useful. It's that data that modifies the publisher's uh, environment. doesn't matter anymore. Data about the user and intent is far more valuable than... The proxy that was environment. In so other words, I no longer boots need in a to. Boot magazine. Not only do I not need to buy uh, an ad on New York Times to get a New York Times reader, I don't even care if it's a New York Times reader. I want highly educated income over 150,000. Uh, no, I want somebody who's looking at these boots. Yeah, oh, even more, even more granular. granular. I want somebody who's a, in the granular. market to buy boots Intent. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, and I know what boots, and I want them, yeah. and I want to get them at the best so price the in a competitive market. Publishers marketplace. didn't stand a chance in that case. There's publishers no, way had no they... chance because they didn't have first party data. They had no discipline of doing that. They didn't build products that gathered. But it wasn't that where mistakes were made. They couldn't have done that, could they? No, they could have. They could have. No, they, they could. They could have built products. I mean, New York Times Food knows things about you in food that they can sell directly with food because they have targeted data about you. Rather than the problem was. We relied on, I have my students always repeat this. Students, what's the myth of mass media? And we <laughs> repeat it. The myth of mass media is that all readers see all ads, so we charge all advertisers for all readers. I'll say it again, students. Okay. All readers see all ads, so we charge all advertisers for all readers. This is a knife and to so my that heart. Meant, huh. this, is, this is class. So that listen closely. It'll be on the final. Okay. Um so that meant that that it did, you know that's why you had a bridge column in a newspaper and a food section in a newspaper and the golf section in a newspaper and all that stuff because you wanted every reader because you charged every reader to every advertiser. Online came along and uh, not Google, not Facebook, online killed mm -hmm. that. Right? Is it all enough, you want to pay for is the Is it enough see. for us instead of uh, trying to build a, a podcast network that it gets everybody to say we're going to try for a, a narrow slice? Is that enough targeting? Yes. Yes. It okay. depends it on is, how narrow your slice or the quality of your narrow, narrow slice. Ours is pretty narrow, and it's pretty high quality, I think. And it depends Yours is even more narrow, Stacey, because right. you're only so IoT users. Mm -hmm. right. right. And my advertisers love that. I yeah. may only yes. get, like, someone may, this is a gross exaggeration, but my advertising may only get 20 clicks, right? And I charge a lot for it. But in the 20 are people who actually... Five buying. of them will buy the product right. at like a huge right. map. Ultimately, right. from an advertiser's <clears throat> point of view, it's right. all about return on investment. If I spend a dollar and I make two dollars, then it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. right. right. So you make targeted products. You're not mass media, either of you. Oh, right. But at the New York Times, you know, is an exception to all rules. You're the Cleveland Plain Dealer. That's a You're better You're making a mass example. product in a yeah. small market. Yeah. Uh, where you have uh, uh, no limit of compa no competition. One, You're not no really one cares local. about Clint. All right, all right, so good, all right. That's good, uh, valuable information. And let's move on to the Spotify challenge and see what you think of this. Spotify, which has been on a tear acquiring podcast networks. They bought Gimlet for $230 million. Dollars. They just, this is this news story that triggered this column. They just bought The Ringer, which is Bill Simmons' smaller network, 30 podcasts, but it's all sports, although there's some society stuff. He does a movie podcast. You watch a movie with him and stuff. 
the CEO of Spotify, Daniel Ek, said, we've bought the next ESPN. Like, this is, if you know, this is going to be as valuable as ESPN. We don't know how much they spent. Figure it's probably $100 million or more. At least. For a company with 30 podcasts, 90 employees, and revenue of about $18 million a year. Um, Spotify is rolling up the internet audio market, says uh, this column. Uh, and they're willing to spend half a billion dollars to do it. Over the last six years, they've bought 15 companies, uh, all of which are about data analytics, music and audio production, audio ads, licensing, podcasting networks. And his p contention is that, you know, right now, podcasting is based on RSS. It's a free and open platform. You make an RSS feed, you're a podcast. What Thank you, Dave Warner. Yes, thank you, Dave Weiner. What Spotify wants to do is eliminate that. They're, in fact, one could argue they're not even doing podcasts. They're doing uh, any more than Netflix is doing podcasts. They're doing this is like this is this is like blogs. A, a this, is, this is what happened to blogs. Right. They're doing uh, yeah. They aggregated into larger platforms like Medium. Uh, yep. So Spotify. By the way, he said you know, uh, Spotify. No other company has Spotify's scale and audience around the globe. Seven. And this is Daniel Eck again. Seventy-eight markets where we do business. No other company has the two-sided marketplace we've built at Spotify that benefits both artists and creators along with consumers. Nobody else has both. Anyway, he goes on to make the pitch. What they really want to do is privatize open standards, take over the already large public commons, and here's the pressure point they have. They can go to advertisers and say, we know more because we're like Google and Facebook. We are the gatekeeper. We know everything about the audience because they have Our to RSS listen. was open. They, RSS, we don't know anything, but but Spotify, it, Matt Stoller says. Do you is, know what proportion of the revenue of Spotify is ad versus sub? I'm sure I could find that. I don't. He's. I think they've talked about that a little bit. Um, they have an, a free ad-supported version and they have a subscriber version. version. But by so the what's way, their real strategy there's then? not no Question. ads in podcasts in the subscriber paid version, I think. Those still, podcasts still have ads in them, mm -hmm. right? They so do. they're double yes. dipping. Um, so I think the Spotify challenge is they could, uh, their goal probably is to put RSS style podcasting out of business. And, and they feel like the pressure they, that they can exert is we can give the advertisers a better value proposition because we know everything about the, the, uh, the, the listener. Well, well we can verify. Can, well, start with this. We can verify that they listened, that they, we, yeah. you know, right now, you, you know, so this is hard is for most. us because people say, well, did they hear the ad? I don't know. Oh, right. Oh. Revenue at Spotify is 1.86 billion euros. That's total revenue. That's up 24%. Ad-supported revenue is 217 million of those euros. Oh, so a big portion of it is uh, subscriber, more than 80%. Yes, yeah, I, I show yeah. 90%. 90%, yeah. So their goal isn't the advertising data. Their goal is to be Hulu come Netflix. No, so I disagree game. because... Okay. They have the Netflix problem. Remember, the movie companies started pulling out their A-list quality content, <clears throat> and and Spotify is going to have that problem. They live and die by the record industry. The record That's industry why they could, bought it. could kill them. Mm -hmm. That's so why they, stuff. they want to be in. They want to be the place to go for not music, but for audio. Period. Right. And and they can own podcasting in a way that they can't own the record industry. So, so I think it's a. I think it's too. It's a defensive move. Just as Netflix started making original content for the same reason. They have they have to do that to pr protect yeah, themselves. Yeah, they the say industry. in their they said in their earnings, which the, they did earnings uh, last week, this week, this no last week. Sorry, I don't know what day it is. Um, they did say that podcasts are having a positive impact on the conversion rate of free uh -huh, to paid users. Yeah. So what Stoller suggests is the Clayton Act. It was passed in 1913. Clayton yeah, to stop monopolies through mergers, even when such monopolies are in incipiency, he says the courts could invoke or the FTC could invoke the Clayton Act to block the Ringer merger. Way too soon. Way too soon. Their yeah. market share is tiny. It'll never happen. This. It'll, It'll never win. Ne well, they Plus can do it. Players. The Clayton Act says even if it's an incipient market. Yeah. But you're right. It'll um, never happen. you got too many other players. And, 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 and you have players who, you know, has Amazon blown this? Has Audible blown this? Well, more, also Audible more to the point, the and, and there were comments on Hacker News about this article, that there are plenty of podcasts. I'll, I'll include myself, uh, uh, Marco Arment, uh, who ha makes a podcast client, who are never going to abandon RSS. We're not going to become a Spotify exclusive. Oh, right. Uh, Plus, there's Apple. 
as a major unless force they offer there. you a hundred million dollars, right, Leo? On well, more <laughs> to the point, unless advertisers <laughs> two fifty, Stacey. No, 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 no. It could be worse than that. If advertisers don't buy ads. Because they say, well, I'm not going to buy your ads. I have no idea whether those ads are working. That's, that's the risk. That's, yeah, can I, that's your risk. Can I ask a devil's advocate question about that? Um, well, since this is going to be your company as soon as you metastasize, <laughs> exactly. as soon as I, as, metabolize, um, <laughs> whatever it is you're doing. Why don't we try to know as much about our viewers as Spotify does? Because oh, they will freak the I don't want to know that. Why, that's why, a segue to they, asking for the damned uh, survey. They, no, are, is it? Well, it could be. It, it, it is a segue <laughs> to the survey. But the survey is not nearly as good but because a survey no. is voluntary. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a selective are, group. Are, are people abandoning Spotify in droves because Spotify knows stuff about them? No, yeah. but here's the thing. Would they, would, they, would they really abandon us because we know that they well, that's we the, know some things that's about That's the them. test that people like. Bill Simmons and Ringer are going to try and say, well, what happens if we go Spotify exclusive? Do we lose audience? My my suggestion is they will because there's too many other shows. Right. And nobody wants to be forced to which client they use. And it's in our interest, and this is why, Carson, we won't do that. It's in our interest to be everywhere people want to listen to us. I want to be on Amazon Echo. Yes. I want to be on YouTube. I want to be, I don't want I'm to not, tell you. I'm not you, saying we should be exclusive. We'd have to be if we wanted to collect that information. We'd have to say, and you can only listen to Twit on the Twit app. That would have to be the choice because otherwise we can't collect that information. Podcasters could have come together years and years ago and come up with a standard, but just like our, just like bloggers, uh, just like newspapers too, over the years, uh, we were all independent minded and didn't want to do that and didn't want to lose the openness of it. And so we never had that data. So one who, get, one who can't come up with that data, but it's going to be very expensive for Spotify to get that data across a wide, you know, the, Podcasts are still a long tail, God bless them. And there's tons of stuff out there they're not going to buy and the people are going to listen to by other mechanisms and they're not going to have that data. Yeah. And advertising is a smaller part. So I, that's why I'm asking whether this is more of a Netflix play than an ad play. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what Spotify's plan is. I think that, that there's a virtue in this in a variety of different places and they don't really have to make that decision. They could benefit either way. But I just want to spy does it hurt on us? I don't even want, is all I care about. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't want to spy on listeners either. Obviously, I do. I do. I want to know what I want to know. I want to know. I want to know what our listeners want from us, and I want to be able to tell our advertisers what our listeners. So take the want. survey. Yeah, Twit.tv. TV. Twit two. That's fair. Twit two slash survey twenty. Are we still doing that thing? Yeah. We are. Okay. We are. We are. At, we, <laughs> that wonderful thing. I, by the way, I hate help these. help us. Easy. Please, no, listeners, Lisa and I, listeners, please help us Lisa beat Spotify. Lisa and I will f go get like hammer and tongs battle over these things because mm -hmm. I don't want to spy on our audience. I, I'm not willing spying to do. You're not spying at all. You're, not You're not asking spying. them to help no. you and we, tell you what they like. So that's why I'm willing to do it. I don't want to do it too often. I'll do it once a year. I don't want to. I don't look. I want to make it a pleasant thing to listen to Twit, not a not a uh, e-commerce transaction. Mm -hmm. I want to make it family. You're listening because you like us. We like you. We're all in this together. Who cares if we have ads? I don't need to pay mm -hmm. rent. But at the yeah, but our viewers <laughs> want us to succeed. So if we can, no, we can I, and give, I thank you, viewers, for going to twit.to slash survey twenty and take, thank you. <laughs> take that. I, thank you. I have some personal uh, animus towards marketing of any kind, <laughs> towards <laughs> success, all of that stuff. That's just my own thing. We know you don't. Really Leo two point oh, actually, is Leo like fifty? Communist. Well, will not this, have that problem. If this is family, let's let's look at it on a, a family scenario. You, you're having a party at the house for the family. You know certain family members. Do you pass are coming. the hat at your party? No, no, of course not. <laughs> What you is don't. passing the hat? You don't. You don't say. Hey, give me five bucks for this party. No, we no. don't. We don't you do that. You throw the party. We don't do that. But we also throw the party to say, you know, um, cousin so and so was coming, and cousin so and so likes to have this with their meal, so we'll get that. Yes. Because we survey. But you don't to then find go. To, yeah, but you don't go to cousin and say, also. now give me five bucks. No, we don't do that. But, but you're poor, we you do. Buddy. We do I, I survey people, to say, I ask hey, people what do to you bring like? a dish to the party. Oh, yeah, covered dish. You could share it. Yeah, it could be a potluck. Ring, ring, is Twit a potluck some... or yeah. a restaurant? Or a Chautauqua. Y'all, we have to stop talking about food. <laughs> We're going to wrap this up. We're done. I, do I, I have mean, a change I wanna know, log? I want to note. 
that yes. Karsten was so uncomfortable he had to retie the tie. He did. He put yeah. it back on. <laughs> yep, I actually, Harvard I men cannot the, walk around without the tie back on. It's in the bar. Uh, actually, you know what wait, I want? Did, wait, 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 wait. You know what I want? I know what? what I really want. Tell right me what now. you want. What you really, really want? I want him to untie it and give us video on Karsten Cam of the of his method of tying. It's I want just a, I like want a tying a shoe. Tie we'll make that a twit. It's bit. a bow. It's just like tying a shoe. You already here know we go. Here we go. Okay. Karsten Cam now bow tie. You gotta get up a little higher. Okay. There you go. The little dog goes through the hole. It comes out of the hole. The rabbit bites the mouse's head off. And there you have it. It is a bow tie. Yeah, I can't. I can't yes, you can. Can you tie your shoes, Jeff? Yes, I can. It's the same thing. You just have to do it for six months straight. I, I sucked at it for six months. And do months. it backwards. <laughs> you have to do it backwards. Oh, I didn't iron your shirt. He never irons his shirt. <laughs> Sucking Google has filed a trademark. This is the changelog. Play the bun, buns. Play the buns. Play the drums. <laughs> the bun drums. Google changelog. The drum buns. It's time to go home. I shouldn't mention buns. She's so hungry. It's, it's uh, the new operating system from Google is, are you ready for the name? Pigweed. No. But why? No. Why? <laughs> oh, FCC trademark sleuth redditor Igats. It was the last sound a human could make that was left. <laughs> has filed found that Google has filed a trademark application for the for the USPTO for the name Pigweed. Google states the Pigweed trademark will cover computer operating software. That's all we know. But there you have it. By the way, according to the Brooklyn Botanical Garden. Pigweeds, also known as amaranths, are leafy plants that are edible and actually nutritious. Ugh, amaranth flower is so gross. That's a pigweed right there. Mm -hmm. Some pigweeds, What's gross about it? when fully grown, will actually dry good. out and form tumbleweeds, oh, spreading their seeds as mm -hmm. they're tossed by the wind. It's That's a it's all a flowers, hippie. right? <laughs> amaranths. I've had amaranth flower. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. flower like the flowers, but flower no, 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 no. Made flower. You grind it up to make it bread with it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, oh, you are hippies, those, Jesus. Those pale, paleo people who want to go it's back to... It's a paleo to, thing. So oh, okay. You just yeah, wouldn't it understand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Google, Google. I can't, I can't talk. Google's Chrome ad blocker will target three annoying video ads. Uh, this is the ad... Th did you know that Chrome had an ad blocker? Yes, a standards-backed ad blocker. It's been around... Huh. The it's, what? Yes, last mm -hmm. year. Uh, yes. Now banning things we all hate like non-skippable pre-roll, any group of ads longer than 31 seconds before a video and that cannot be skipped within the first five seconds. By the way, who does this benefit? Google. Google. Wait, what happens to YouTube? There's all kinds of crazy ads before my YouTube Oh, videos. but they're skippable, right? Uh, not not all some of, of them. them are some of them yeah, some of them are we've some talked of them about are. this before they've been working on this for for yeah. about a year yeah mid roll ads if it, that's ads in the middle of content of any duration that appear in the middle of a video interrupting the user's experience that's all our ads by the way <laughs> all of them <laughs> any image or text ads that appear on top of a playing video and are in the middle one third of the video player window or cover more than twenty percent. Of the video <laughs> content, like Jeff Jarvis's lower third, which is actually a lower half. I'm making a fortune on this. A fortune, I tell you. <laughs> the Coalition for Better Ads group has mandated websites stop showing these ads over the next four months or risk losing advertising completely. Chrome enforcement begins August 5th. Wow. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. That's a big bum, ba -dum, change. Da -da -da. Google also is moving ahead with his plan to bar uh, ban third party cookies. It's commonly thought of as tracking cookies. Who wins with that? Google, Google. because they don't need third-party cookies. They've got they know everything, everything else. else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they're saying we we talked to you know we did surveys of forty-five thousand users. This is what they hated, so we're gonna we're gonna block it. I think that there's it's a virtue. There's a virtue in it as well. So uh, Google Chrome will also block. Uh, a variety of file downloads that are potentially hazardous. HTTP will no longer be usable from EXE to TXT. Unsafe downloads. Uh, if if it's 
They're also blocking mixed content, resources like files, images, and scripts that get loaded over insecure connections from a web page that says it's HTTPS. So that is, you see this warning a lot, right? Mixed content. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just confusing to users. Is this secure? Am I not secure? Is this file secure? So it'll, uh, it'll protect your privacy and it'll also um, protect your... Uh, you can still get a... a you could download piece it. Of malware, you have to do it over. Though. Oh yeah, it's not going to prevent malware. You know, oh, did I say that? No. No, you didn't. But that's. Just, It'll be a little better. People will assume that they they won't get malware. Insecure downloads are bad for privacy and security. An eavesdropper can see what a user is downloading. An active attacker can swap the download for a malicious one. The man in the middle attack mm -hmm. that's prevented by HTTPS. So that's that's the theory there. And. <laughs> I'm going to have to read this carefully. Now you, period, can text like this, thanks, period, to Google's new speech-to-text, period, settings. <laughs> Google's, this is from The Verge, Kim Lyons writing, Google's overly aggressive voice-to-text setting is auto-punctuating poorly. That's not really a change log. That's a change complaint. Uh, they've Apparently, the change log is that they pushed a fix out over the last the weekend. So if you're getting weird punctuation... It's not in Gboard. It's the voice typing mode, which doesn't have a keyboard attached to it. But Google says, we're going to fix that. Thanks, that, Google. Thanks, Google. You're swell. See, that's the way to be. Thanks, Google. <laughs> thank you, Google. I tell Good Google thank Google. you when it does things right. You should. Are you ready for tidy QA? You're going to have to explain this. You're the queen of the data set. Oh, uh, Lord, Stacey. I don't even... I was like, I have never even seen this. Hold up. It's a data set that <laughs> aims to capture the uniqueness of languages. It's a question-answering data set covering 11 languages inspired by typological oh. diversity. Sorry, yes. The theory is that different languages express meaning in structurally unique ways. Is it like the difference between like when I'm speaking... Versus like something like ASL, where the subject verb, like the whole structure of the language is different. Yeah. I assume other languages have things like that. Well, there's always the, you know, and, and, and uh, Jeff knows this from his German. German. There's the subject object versus object subject. There's actually three mm -hmm. different ways. So what it, English does it, uh, what is it? Subject verb. Stacy runs object? fast. Stacy runs, runs fast. Stacy steals Leo's. N now it goes subject, money. verb, descript, uh, uh, adjective. Adjective or. And German puts the verb object. at the end, right? So. Right. So Stacy Hill runs. So, subject, object, verb. That's it. So we Stacey are. Up the hill runs. Oh, it's the other way around. We, subject, in verb, English, object. it's okay. S. Subject, verb, object. O. Right. German is. S -O, S o v, there are languages that are v o s and v s o mm -hmm. as well, and so that's that's one structural issue, um, and there's more apparently. The researchers point out, for instance, that English changes words to indicate one book versus many books. Arabic has a third form to indicate if there are two of something, so you've got singular, plural, and just two. Oh. And there's yeah. the oh. gen gender issues as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Chinese mm -hmm. has no genders. Chinese, China has no gender. German has three genders. What's the yeah. one? Oh, neuter. 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 Just like Latin. Yeah. Neuter. Male, female, neuter. neuter. Uh, anyway, interesting. So uh, there you go. I don't know what you do with it, but there you, there you have it. And that, my friends, concludes a bizarre... <gasps> what? You missed one. I missed one? You missed a Androidify. Androidify is gone I hope you enjoyed it for the brief time it was there. What was remember, that? This was the thing that oh, nobody I remember used a lot of people oh, doing. You could make oh, like a bitmoji it, yeah. of yourself, mm -hmm. but you'd be a little Android avatar. That was ridiculous. That was nobody used that. Jason Howell, just, all idiot. about Android team used all it. All of that the Reuters it. and Rommers did that. Reuters and Rommers did it? Oh, oh yeah, because yeah. they would want a special, yeah. 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 So you no more Andro Androidify. It hadn't been updated since 2016, so... <laughs> Probably <laughs> the guy left, and uh, that's that. Um, it might there, have been a girl. The person. person. There is still, uh, well, the geek's might gone. Have been I take it back. I was going to go to androidify.com, but it redirects to android.com. <laughs> so there isn't even a website anymore. It's gone. Cool. 
By Androidify, we hardly knew ye. We certainly rarely used ye. <laughs> you know, the fun is gone. It is. It's business now, baby. Uh, you know, new phone, big deal. Uh, no, I uh, like that phone. Little Android thing yourself. <laughs> I like that phone. I want oh, that phone. Weird. The fun you're is weird. not gone, Jeff. Just today, I talked to somebody about a new chip for Bluetooth and wireless. It's going to make life so much better. You just you have to be have excited. the weirdest. I love when she of starts talking about chips of anybody I know. <laughs> So it's hot. so awesome it when you is. think about how these things are going to be used. Stacy, is that your thing of the week? No, my thing of the week is actually somebody. Oh, is it time for that? Yeah. We have to close All right. Out. Wait, my man, thing we of the need week to close, is. We got to close. Oh, the and that's out. the Google Change Log. I, I just love that. We got home. structure on this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just like, you right, can't do that. that. You can't go on. By the way, I, I left out one very important thing. It's you can send a birthday card to Google Maps. It's turning 15 as of February 6th. I hate that they changed the logo because now I can never find maps on my phone. It's yeah, driving me now up. it's just the pin. Is the yeah, I agree. Icon. I agree. You yeah. got to not change your little app icon. I know. I didn't it's like, like when people change their logo. Twitter avatars. It looked the, like a map. It was the, too skeuomorphic. The, yeah, now it's a pin. The old logo was kind of crappy. Yeah. It's, I, it's I, true, I like but I trained myself to find it. All right, Learn Stacey. It's okay. Give us your pick of the week. <clears throat> My pick of the week. Because I think two people asked me on Twitter, which, you know, that's enough. I'll give you my opinion about books for tweens or teens or kids um, and teenage girls in particular, I am going to tell you for Valentine's Day, I purchased two books for my daughter, mm -hmm. one of which is probably relevant to this audience. It's called Tweet Cute. <laughs> it's, it's about, that voice. it's about a girl whose family runs a burger chain and she runs their social media account. And then a boy whose family runs a bistro and he, he has their social media account, and then the big chain steals. They give the each other really me. bad reviews on the internet and get into a fight is, and and get arrested, right? Is it's it, like you know, it's like you've got mail, except instead of email, it's Twitter. I was going to ask if this was like influencer coaching at a at a younger yeah. age. Is that what oh, this is? What is this? The FTC so, arrests them both for not uh, revealing their no, sir. So it's basically <laughs> like a cute little rom com set in like. This that age. So that's one. And then the other that's one is Sway. Is it? No, not Sway. Slay. I didn't put that in there. Let me let me get it. Uh, sorry. It's not in My the doc. <laughs> Slay, Amazon. I'm sorry, you guys. And I'm trying to get the author. By Brittany Morris. And it's about a girl. She's uh, like 12 or 13, I think. Okay. And she designs an online world for that celebrates African-American heritage. And... Nice. Then it gets hacked and people are turning it into this horrible, horrible place. And she's got to solve this because she doesn't want to shut it down because she wants a place for people to feel like they're themselves. And this is exciting. And so those are the two books. My, my daughter went to a bookstore and cool. found that there were a gajillion books that she wanted to read. So those are the two I purchased Aww. for her that have her seal of approval. Nice. Um, so if you're in the market, there you go. That's I love that. Cool. I used to go with cool. Abby to the bookstore and we'd go home with an arm full of books. Yeah. And like your daughter, she read way too fast and we'd get through them in a, in a week. <laughs> yeah, my friend just gave her The Soul of an Octopus, which is kind of a, it's not a dense book, but I wouldn't expect a 13-year-old to like down that in like a sitting, but she did. <laughs> I think that's so cool. That's, that's, I think that bodes well for your, so. both you as a parent and her as a that's child. That's awesome. Ant, you got a pick for us? I do. Um, keeping with the Black History Month theme, I want to give a shout out uh, to the Willie T. Ribs documentary, which was uh, produced by Adam Carolla. It is now available on Netflix, just in case people... Does he produce a lot of documentaries? He's, he's really big into documentaries, and this uh, one is so well but done. But they're all about cars. No, not always. Um, I was hoping it was for home delivered ribs. <laughs> <laughs> no, this that's is a his guy's name, name. Willie T. Name. Ribs. He's the Jackie Robinson of auto racing. Right, and the the doc is called Uppity. He is the first that. African American to uh, qualify for the Indy 500. And wow. coming from the South, I grew up with my granddad being a mechanic for Chevrolet for pretty much all of my adult life, well, all of my life. 
And so we would talk about racing every now and then, but we never got into the story of Willie T. Ribs. I knew nothing about this. And Nobody able, does. That's the sad story, right? right? I knew nothing about it. But yeah. going into this documentary, I was able to learn more about the battles that he had just going from the U.S. to international racing and coming back to the U.S. to race. And he was going, kind of accepted in England. Kind of. Yeah. Right. He was a Formula Ford uh, champion. But then here in the U.S. and getting into NASCAR, he, there were points where even his own teammates were trying to sabotage That's it. so sad. You know, but he was still able to overcome. What year was the uh, year about, there about? Looks like 70s, maybe? No, I thought it was up to the 80s. Really? That I recently? It, That's I want to so say it sad. got up to the 80s. He um, was the first African American to race in the Indy 500. Indy 500. Um, just a great story, and it was just really raw. Uh, there's no narration in it except for him. So it's, nice. it's, so it's, it's really, really good. Well done. Really good. Well done. That's a good one. Uh, Jeffy Jarvis. So I kind of like this one. So Google has six need states for search. This may panic you because they want to get into your head more than you would think. Uh -oh. These six states are surprise me. Yeah. Help me. Help me. Reassure me. Oh. Educate me. Impress me. And thrill me. Can you do this in the I'm feeling lucky box? This is no, this is how they're they're doing the product. These are there's their personas. Oh. So what gets me is so there's three kinds. There's emotional needs, social needs, and functional needs. You would think that Google would only be about functional needs. It wouldn't be in your head. For your how emotion. would they know if you want to be surprised or helped? Well, this is what every company does when they do these personas. Oh uh, yuck. Yeah, Sally this is, is a twenty five year old. Go ahead, advertisers. Sadie. No, it's targeted towards advertisers. It's not uh, for you and I. It's like, do yeah. you want to be next to a search that uh, for a user who's looking for something surprising? Right. Are you a high dollar, cool, whatever? You know, maybe you want to be there. If you're reassuring, you're going to be like Pampers. Oh, see, I thought, so when you go to the <laughs> Google search page and you hover your mouse over, I'm feeling lucky, mm -hmm. it will do different, you know, that I could choose. I'm feeling. Oh, I didn't even know you didn't that. Know that? No, yeah, I'm feeling puzzled. You, you I'm, didn't know. I'm, I'm feeling, feeling doodly. Oh, I did I'm not feeling know that. generous. I didn't oh, know that. I'm feeling, and it's kind of like the magic eight ball because you don't, you don't control what it's going to say. You just have to each time try again. I've always just done. I'm feeling lucky and clicked it and moved on. <laughs> mind is, never I'm feeling hungry and I'm going to get restaurants, right? Uh, I'm feeling playful. What am I going to get? I'm going to get. Playful stuff. There's oh, it's Art Cloakie. No, this is from 2011. <laughs> Nine years ago, it was Art Cloakie's 90th birthday. He's the guy who created Gumby. <clears throat> I guess it's doodles. It's just random doodles. I don't know. I'm feeling stellar. Ooh, what are we gonna get? The world's oh, uh oh, the world's it's money. Google misusing its monopoly to advertise its own service. <laughs> well, well yeah. Was, uh oh, uh oh. Europeans go after them. Well, and now Google I'm, wants to own the earth. Now I'm stuck in uh, Google Earth, the world's most... <laughs> that was good. Well done. Detailed globe. Anyway, I thought it was that, but it's not. It's something else that's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. <coughs> and meanwhile, uh, Jeff Bezos bought uh, David Geffen's mansion for a 1.65... <sighs> how much was that again? Million dollars. $165 million. Ah. By the way, no truth to the rumor that Bill Gates is buying a yacht. Yeah, that was ridiculous. You just knew it. <laughs> That was just that was, bad was, journalism, was, wasn't it? Yes. You call that journalism? Well, it was repeated <laughs> everywhere. There's yep. the 165 million. But see, now after this, I I feel like I can't I can't do any of these stories. Um, this was out of um, Engadget. Bill Gates reportedly buying the first hydrogen powered super yacht. I just knew this was BS. And then update. <laughs> Uh, we got this from some site called Synod, and uh, apparently that's not true. <laughs> but only one of the many journalists who retweeted this or repeated this bothered to call the manufacturer. I think it's a good story. That's the problem. People want, they want to believe it, right? Yeah. Sure, he bought a yacht. Okay, great. Yeah, it's an expensive yacht. He, he's got money. He's of got a lot of money. Why didn't he buy a yacht is my question. Right. Apparently he did not buy this $645 million, 100% green luxury super yacht. Not sold. I was hoping I'd get invited on it. I know. Oh, that's so Isn't funny. that funny? Because I don't know Bill Gates, and there's no reason why he'd invite me, but I still have that fantasy. 
You yeah, know, maybe it, Bill would just say, hey, I like your podcast. You want to come on my yacht? It would be a story <laughs> if that had said um, Newsom bought a yacht, you know? But this is Bill Yeah, the Gates. governor. Oh. Yeah, no, who cares what Bill Gates does? And he, anyway, he I did. I thought it was cool that you could have a hydrogen-powered yacht. That's all I thought was cool. Yeah. yeah. That's the story. Is it, uh, yeah. I was like, I thought the story was in Well, the that's still yacht. true. It's still Bill Gates. Still. That's still true. <laughs> that is not untrue. That yacht is, but what Sinod, who was making it, wanted everybody to know is we haven't sold it yet, so it's still available. <laughs> <laughs> Bill did not buy Aqua. Sure. It has, a, it has in. A, something like a 3,000-mile range. With because you you can't guarantee there's hydrogen everywhere and right. that's kind of cool. Can it make it from the water it's sailing in? Can it make for an additional no. fee? See, that's but what it needs. but the output <laughs> is only the water from the thing. Look at that. Right. No, I I get that. I'm just like. Oh, that's not the yacht like, he bought. That's a yacht he rented. Full circle. So he has rented <laughs> yachts like this. He just hasn't bought any. Yeah, he and needs a Bill, solar water crack. Bill's actually very smart. You Always better to rent, not buy, when you're talking yachts. Yeah. Even yeah. if you're as rich as Bill Gates. Um, I have nothing to add. I have no Well, pick. I know what you're going to have next really? week. No what am I going to have next week? Cake. You're going to have a phone. I want to have oh, a flip wait, phone. I actually added a pick for you, Leo. Oh, God. Carson's <laughs> even. Better do what Carson <laughs> says. Carson's even Get doing him, producer. Picks Get him, for me. producer. All right, all right. When oh, I, that is adorable. Producer I must produce. Like <laughs> producer oh, yeah. got to produce. I I closed the the right, rundown. Here, I got I got it on my screen. <laughs> I, okay, this is Karsten's pick. Someone with built a distraction fee <laughs> cell phone with a working old school rotary dial. Nice. No distractions on that. That antenna is awesome. Might get a hernia carrying it around. <laughs> is that like part of a what? I'm trying to figure out on the side what it is. What's, that your antenna meter? Like saying this is how good signal your strength. antenna yeah. signal strength is? Oh, sure. That's probably what that it's is. like it. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't look like it has. Can you buy it? No, okay. Now I'm, now I'm curious because now I'm thinking maybe I should get no, this. No, he's going to buy it. Yeah, this, is from, uh, this is from Gizmodo. Uh, but it was f filed today. Oh, it's a new story. Look at that. Look at that. That's a beauty. Oh, this is this is created by a woman. Yes, Justine Haupt. Um, yeah, Justine Haupt. Created, oh, it is. It's, a, it's a, an LED signal meter. Yep. Oh, nice. nice. It's got a it's got a, a liquid uh, ink screen. An e ink screen. E ink screen. That uh, sh shows caller information and history. So there is. It's 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 not technology. Uh, light. It just doesn't have any distractions. You can't put it in a pocket unless you're unless Gizmodo says you're wearing an oversized novelty trench coat. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you could hold it up to your ear for the length of an average. Is that a phone in your pocket? Good lord, that's hysterical. Good for Justine Haupt. Here she she's this is she put this on her website because in a finicky, annoying touchscreen world of hyper-connected people using phones, they have no control over or understanding of, I wanted something that would be entirely mine, personal, and absolutely tactile while giving me an excuse for not texting. The design page that's linked in there is hilarious. <laughs> the design files, this one? Mm -hmm. Just the comments that she has oh, on there. Uh, 404, oh, I didn't. 404, 404, 404. Look at that. So this is a good story. I like it. Justine Dash Haupt, H A U P T. Do we know what the case was? Dot com. It's a 3D printed enclosure. Oh, yeah, because oh, originally wow. it was on cardboard. It uses an Arduino Micro as the controller. Uh, I don't How know. How does she knows. make a. Uh, what, uh, there had to be, the, the hard part was making the dial work with touch tone. Yeah, but it's not that hard. It's not touch tone. The, the way a dial works. Is it has it the rotary dial has switches and it clicks click, 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 and it click. clicks a certain I know, but that doesn't work on a cell phone. Uh, that's digital. That's analog to digital signaling. That's DSPs right there. Mm -hmm. there I actually, there's a whole class of chips that do that. I actually have. Gosh, I wonder where I put it. Yeah, you can do that with an Arduino. I have it a Western Electric dial cell phone. Literally, cell phone. Oh. You put a SIM in it. I had it for the longest time. It was red. Remember? Whatever. I, I wonder whatever happened to that. <laughs> It's probably over there. It's probably somewhere. <laughs> um, I got it because Wozniak had it. In fact, mm -hmm. I was on a cruise uh, with Steve Wozniak. A hydrogen-powered cruise? Hydro no, a regular everyday <laughs> boat cruise. And he comes to the table for dinner. 
plops down <laughs> like, what? an old Western electric phone. He says, it's my cell phone. And he dials the number. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy. No great. one else would have it but him. No, I love him. Of course. Him. I love him. He's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we can wrap this up. Thank you so much, Stacey Higginbotham. <laughs> she is, of course, at StaceyOnIoT.com. That's her website. Subscribe to her free Ouch. newsletter. <laughs> what? I, I like. I did my wave, and then I was like, quack. <laughs> Pulled my headphones out. Oh, well, okay, <laughs> bye. That's the thing I do. <laughs> So that's that's just me being graceful. Okay, okay yeah. bye. And you can also uh, listen to her podcast with Kevin Tofel. He'll be here next week. Um, uh, all about IoT. Thank you, Stacey. Thanks to Jeff Jarvis, professor, esteemed professor. All right, I got to read it. Esteemed well, don't, don't, Leonard don't, Tao, professor don't. for journalistic innovation at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. He joins us each week. He blogs at buzzmachine.com. He is at Jeff Jarvis on the Twitter and we love him and his bookshelves. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, I need you to do the Charlie Chaplin moving down the stairs gag. Yeah, oh, next time we do your lower the third. Yeah. And Aunt Pruitt, who's the host of Hands On Photography, some yes. other shows coming soon. Yes, yes, yes. Our uh, our staff photographer and uh, and uh, bless his heart. Bless my heart, as they say. <laughs> bless his heart. Uh, we love having he blesses Aunt everybody else on the show every so single we Wednesday. Twit.tv slash hop. Hop! Twit.tv slash hop. hoppity. Thanks also to uh, Karsten Bonney, our newest show host. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Harvard graduate. You can find him behind the behind the, the glowing screen. All tied up. In his mom's I was going to say, basement. not behind the curtain. But. <laughs> He's the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we do this week in Google every Wednesday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, 21.30 UTC. Watch live at twit.tv slash live. There's also an audio stream, so you can listen live there. If you are doing the live thing, you should go into the chat room, because that's where everybody is who's talking about the show in real time at irc.twit.tv. You can talk about the show behind our backs asynchronously, as it were, on the forums. That's twit.community. <laughs> or we even have a Mastodon instance. It's a Twitter-like thing uh, at twit.social. So there's three ways you can talk back to us. We love hearing from you. Uh, if you can't be here in the live venue, then you can always go uh, after the fact to twit.tv slash twig. That's where we put the shows. You can download any show, audio or video. Best thing to do, though, if you have a podcast client and we work everywhere, everywhere, including YouTube, just subscribe. That way you'll get it every time it's uh, available, the minute it's available. Bring it with you on your Thursday morning commute. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye-bye. Welcome to Hands On iOS. This is the show where I'll teach you how to get the most out of your iPads, your Apple TVs, your Apple Watches, your iPhones. If you got an iPod, I can help you with that too. We're gonna dig deep. We're going to go into settings and learn about all sorts of new tools. I'm gonna show you the best apps there are, plus loads of tips and tricks, and maybe I'll even answer your question. There's so much to learn, and you can love your devices even more than you already do with Hands On iOS.